Hello, everyone, and welcome to tonight's episode of Critical Role, where a bunch of us nerdy ass voice actors sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, yeah. Ooh, down to the upper upper echelon of the notes there. Um, before we jump into tonight's session, we do have some quick announcements to get through, beginning with our sponsor for the evening. Deck of Many, Sam. Our sponsors are Deck of Many tonight, so tonight we've put together a Deck of Many characters. This, these cards are like all the ingredients you need to get a, a, a classic Sam Regal advertisement. It's stuff like offensive accent, or parody song that we can't have the rights to, or dad joke, or offensive, or uh. offensive. So I'm gonna pick three things randomly in this deck, and we're gonna make a character for tonight. Okay, number one, Santa Claus. Number two, France. Number three, Doctor. All right, let's go to the props. <sighs> let's see what we got here. Oh, good, I laid both Okay, I got a Doctor thing. Oh, how convenient. Got a, oh, God, oh, yeah, good. Oh, there you go. French thing. Nice. Let's okay. see, what's a French one? The, the mustache. Oh, shit. Who <laughs> these aren't peeled, are they? <laughs> well, let's just go with it. We'll go with it. Uh, <laughs> okay. So uh, I now present Dr. Pierre Santa Claus. Nope. No. Nope. Uh, you put nope. on a shirt. Okay. Point leave. Ho ho ho, jour! <laughs> it is I, Pierre Ooh. Santa Claus. A deck of many just launched their Vendredi Noir. That's Black Friday sales this year early. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Get the mustache uh, on there. Get the mustache on there. Hold for mustache. If you use the code CR2020, that's CR2020, or the link Dick of Many, I'm sorry, the Deck of Many, the Deck of Many .com slash CR2020, you can get shipping on all your orders over $50 in the US and Canada. Of course, I, being Santa Claus, can deliver all over the world on Dasher, on Dancer, on Depardieu, on Disneyland Paris. <laughs> Ooh la la. Oh my God. Uh, you can grab have the classics from them, like animated spell cards or the awesome <laughs> RPG Humberwood. Oh, I forgot, I'm also a doctor. So a get me 20 cc's of the brand new the Islands bag. of Sina Una <laughs> and a hypodermic injection of the Griffin Saddlebags books. <laughs> I'm French too. No. I do not shower. Oh All right. I use, use the code CR2020 oh. or the link thedickofmany.com, thedeckofmany.com <laughs> slash CR2020 and get free shipping on all orders over 50 in the United States and Canada. Vive la revolution! Vive la médecin! Vive la Christmas! Back to you, man. Yay! Wow. wow. <laughs> that was. I haven't, I haven't watched a person melt down in a while. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have a lot of time to read the bit this week. <laughs> But well, we got a shout out for Gerard Depardieu in there. We did, we did. Yeah. I, I am all for creating a Sam deck of many, and then we just have to force you to do this. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah but we get to cultivate the cards. Yeah. Oh, it's a fat cigarette. Is that supposed to be a cigarette? <laughs> yeah. It is a, I believe Mauricio calls it a blunt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do appreciate that it has its own mustache. It's oh, pretty man. funny. Wow. Mm. Thank you, Sam. Uh, thank you, deck of many. Uh, <laughs> uh, for our next announcements for short today, uh, Laura, you have something oh. to talk about. Well, hello there. Oh! What? what? Hold on, hold on. Do it, do it. Oh. I had to put it on, I just love it so much. Um, so yeah, this is, we decided to make our Jester hoodie from the uh, Mighty Vibes video. <laughs> yes! So it's, oh, it's from that? Yeah! yeah. So you can sense. wear it, and you can, you know, just like doodle or whatever. Um, this was, of course, inspired by the hoodie that was designed by Cami Audio Pagita. Um, our, she's the wonderful artist that does the Mighty Vibes yeah. stuff. Um, Opening title sequence. Yes, yeah. she's mm. phenomenal. Um, and so the hoodie is available in both adult and kids sizes. Yeah. Push for that one. Oh my God. Um, so yeah, they're available in the US, the UK, and the Australian stores. Check them out. They're so cute. It's so wonderful. Pull that horn off of your head. Is it squishy? Is the horn squish? It's squish. It's lethal. It's lethal. It's not lethal, it's so wonderful. Yeah, I've, I've had Ronan running around in his. 
No. She looks so cute. cute. She looks so cute. The pretty, little pretty dumb cute. I love her. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I got. Thank you, Laura. You're welcome. Alrighty. Well, that's all we've got as far as announcements go today. Yeah. <laughs> Thus, let's go ahead and bring us into tonight's episode of Critical Role. <laughs> Welcome back. That was late Eight. on the draw. Well done. <laughs> I always <laughs> late. <laughs> Welcome back. So, the Mighty Nine have made their way to Isilcross after agreeing to be hired by Lady Vesterogna of the Cerberus Assembly. You made your way across the frozen depths on an icebreaker ship known as the Midnight Hammer. Did some battle, made your way to Balanpost. The Cerberus Assembly handled outpost here for the Empire on the south end of Forin, the largest landmass within the region of Isilcross. There, you made some friends, gathered some supplies, and prepared yourself to journey northward with Vess and your hired guide, Dagon Underthorn, the following day. During the evening, you scried upon Molly Mock and discovered that he was taking some sort of a tome. A, bind, a, a weirdly front backless bound tome from a comfortable room and seemed to peer back at you, could see you, and converse towards you in the middle of your scry. After this chilling exchange, you all bore down for the night, and the next day began to wonder why Vess hadn't come to meet you when you went to inspect her area on the third and upper floor of the Fort of Ballonpost, you discovered her room had an open window, a thick layer of snow, and her body laid a strewn upon, across the bed, blood pouring from her head in various orifices. Uh, you inspected, gathered her body, set it within your amber, and wore it to keep it under wraps. Using illusion, you convinced the individuals who were currently curious about why uh, there was some commotion at Balan Post that Vesterona was still alive and that they do not have to worry about anything. In these moments, you quickly gathered your things, met up with Dagon, and set out northward from Balan Post with none the wiser for the time being of what has transpired. So, Mighty Nine, carrying your magically sealed corpse of Lady Vesterogna, member of the Cerberus Assembly, and your fantastic guide, Dagon Underthorn, you leave into the frozen expanse, the distant, white, snowy horizon of Isocross, northward. And as the cold midday afternoon begins to set upon you, the temperature causing your cheeks, or most of you who aren't just her, to begin to sting with adjusting to the new, much more frigid out atmosphere. You crunch through the snow, foot after foot, heading northward. As you, after you get a little ways away from Balan Post, and you think you have at least some comfort out of earshot, aside from your 
uh, companion, your guide. If there's anything you'd like to do, discuss or anything, or we will move into the journeying portion of this trek. Matt, I think your music stopped, by the way. <gasps> oh, it did. It crashed, like apps do. Like they do. And just out of curiosity, so the snow is about how high? Uh, mid shin, knee? Uh, from where you are right now, it, it can range anywhere from uh, about knee to waist. So is, are we going to be slowed in this thick powder the terrain? You would, oh. except but. you have and uh, brought with you somebody who is extremely well versed in these regions. Is it me? No. Oh, how? No. <laughs> Not at all you. Yeah, how should we have bought snow like snowshoes or something? I didn't even think about that. It's shaved ice when I see you, Sam. It makes me so hungry. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> mm -hmm. I got three different flavors. <laughs> Bubble gum and grapes. Right. I'm into it. So, as you begin to set out, you watch as Dagon, who has affixed these kind of uh, metallic shovel like elements to the front of his chair lowers them and you watch as they press down and become almost like a like a sled slash carving mechanism at the front and he just looks back over and says well, if we're gonna follow stay close and begins to push forward you can see the wheels he has a set to it are different than the ones that he had when he was in town these have these like mm. uh, jagged almost metal grips across them that they can pick up on the dirt and the rock and he just kind of pushes along and as he does it just grinds this path through the snow just, I've got a few miles of this, we might hit some ice, or at least, hopefully, uh, part of the land that's not quite as uh, challenging for you folk. Dagon, is there anything that we can help keep an eye out for on our flanks? Anything that likes to ambush or? Anything. Anything. Any, anything is what we're keeping an eye out for. So Copy there's nothing, you. Any, nothing good to see out here, then, at all. No cute winter. Furry animals or the like. Oh, there are animals, yeah. <laughs> okay. No jackrabbits or like. We talked you know, about all of the monsters. Baby seals yeah. or. The last decay. I mean, you won't find seals as far into the uh, the landmass itself. You can go back to the shore if you're looking for seals. But um, you might see some snow rabbits. You might see some wolves. You might see some other north area. Bison of some kind, but the further north we go, the less game you're going to find. And uh, this map from Lady Dorogna here. Um, I know we're traveling from Balin Post up towards uh, Aeor. Are we going to go along this shoreline, around sort of this plateau elevated area, or are we going to go along this? I'd recommend going on the eastern side. The, the cliffs are a little precarious. Lava area. Okay. Right, right, the lava river. Yeah. Yeah. We'll stay far enough away. Ooh, ooh, ooh. No reason till necessary. Anyway, follow suit. Now, he does have a natural explorer Arctic feature, which means uh, difficult terrain doesn't slow his group down. Oh, yes. his group. Uh, none of you can become lost unless by magic means. So for uh, he a ranger? <laughs> I bet uh, he's, a he's a ranger. He's taking a little bit of ranger, yeah. yeah. That's why he's a good guide in his spaces. Yeah. Um, so, following his lead forward. Where's your damn music? Lead's <clears throat> not coming through too well. <clears throat> <We're just> gonna <clears throat> go here. <clears throat> there you go. <clears throat> we have our own set. <laughs> 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 Yay. Spooky. Oh, that's better. <laughs> Spoopy. Pushing onward, heading northward, you keep yourselves bundled, trying desperately not to inhale too deeply with any given breath, as certain elements of the wind as it cuts through can cause the temperatures to drop far lower than you were expecting, and you catch yourself one point or another sputtering as you can feel some of the moisture in your lungs almost seem to crystallize and freeze, having to cough them back out. This is going to be a tough trek, but oh. nevertheless, as Dagon is leading ahead, who is helming the main visual range around you, who is keeping watch for anything. Uh, I'll, I'll do that. Okay, go ahead and make a perception check Can for I me. Can I assist Caduceus? Yeah, if you'd like to. I'll Fine. just, I kind of hover in his, like his, I'm drifting behind him, uh -huh. you know, and just trying to look wherever he's You're rolling with drafting. me, am I taking? You take a take advantage. advantage. All right. Staying in the wind tunnel? Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, natural 20. Ooh. Oh, yes. 
Start. Started off right. Oh, my these, these last two sessions, you guys have been just Stink. 20 in it. That's good. <laughs> well, good. Keeping that in mind. Um, advantage wasn't even needed on that one. Uh, Dagon does kind of shout over his shoulders. He's pushing forward. He said we were going to the um, the uh, excavation to the east of Alawax, right? Um, A5 is where um, right. Lady Daragna told us to meet her. I know where, roughly whereabouts where it is. I've passed through there and taken some folks to and from before, so uh, just follow me. Okay. So, trekking through you, there Unless, are... You know, I could maybe send her a message and see if those plans have changed. But oh yes, but perhaps maybe, uh, maybe after a few hours in, we yeah. should do that though. We're just it's a getting smart started, idea. Let's, yeah, put some like distance. To see that. Yeah. Fair just, enough. Just just a uh, just a note on this map. There is an A question mark that's way to the east, not in the direction we're going. We're okay ignoring that for now, right? Feels like we should do the ones that like. People have gone to before. Yeah, but the video yeah, gamer in me wants to go to the question yeah, mark. Yeah, I mean, I definitely want to see what the question mark is, okay. but you know, I know it's Lady long, Bess had said, detour. you know, two A and A, two Alpha and Alpha. This is where we're headed. Yeah, and stuff. Uh, Dagen, if You're we right. hit every one of the A's, how long would that? You sure the map take? Just on the map, or all the ones that are known. Wait, there's ones known not on the map? Well, yeah, yeah, there's excavations all around Isocross, across multiple islands, and and these are just the ones in the southern portion of Foran here. Oh. Wow. I think we stick to the map for now. Uh, I was only paid to go to uh, the main excavation and uh, some destinations in between, as you pointed out, but if you wanted to go further than that, it's going to cost you more. And if you want to go uh, across different islands, well, you're going to have to book us passage as well. Okay, okay, okay. What's the so. furthest north you've been? <sighs> to the crater. What's the crater? There's this odd kind of bull crater. I've only been there once. There's some of the wild folk tell myths of a place that sometimes it's, it's not what you remember it was. Some people say it's a dreamscape of beautiful greenery in the middle of the icy expanse. Others say it's a volcanic, destitute nightmare. Others say it's a weird desert landscape where fly and bees scream. Now, none of that makes sense, and it sounds like folks just going a little crazy when they're lost out in the wilds of Isocross, but I saw with my eyes, looked over a mountain ridge, and there it was, a big old valley filled with all sorts of weird, lush green. Didn't belong. I think I speak for the group and I say, we, I feel like we've seen weirder. So that, that, that seems. All right, well, there you go. It doesn't affect yeah. you all that much. And you well, said this was like further that. north? This is to the very, very north. Yeah. Very north. So you're, right now, you're tempting us with something that has nothing to do with our current <laughs> mission. I can tell you, <laughs> there's a whole. Amazing. There's a lot of amazing things in Exandria. Mm -hmm. And I hope you get to see some of them before you die. But I ain't taking you everywhere. Okay, okay, it's okay. fair, it's fair. What if all the way north, maybe that's homeward bound, you know? Oh. Maybe that's where we're trekking. Bloody Sam. Eventually. Well, if it's a giant crater, I wonder if that's where the... The city used to be. Yeah. Dagan, you don't happen to have a, mm. a, a map or, or know of any of these excavation sites that might be able to provide a map north of Aeor's location, do you? I keep all out of beer. Shit. Are you very good at drawing? I haven't tried. Okay, we'll uh, check it later today. And I can sign my name in the snow if that's what you mean, but. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty cool. All right, fair enough. <laughs> and he keeps pushing on. Hmm. Um, well, for the first day of travel, and to get to that specific location on foot, thankfully, uh, still keeping uh, Dagon in your current group. You'll get there in about five or so days. Damn. It's five days of travel. Sucks. Okay. So for the first day, I would like somebody to roll a d20 for me. I'll do it. It's 12. 12. Oh no. All right. <laughs> you would have Keeping that your eyes you for you. <laughs> <laughs> the extremes seem to be bad. Oh no. You move along 
a fairly quiet day. The weather is clear. The soft snow that was falling near Ballon Post in the southern portion of the island begins to dissipate. The wind begins to fall to just a fair breeze. While it is still cold, your journey goes unimpeded. So the first day's journey, relatively uneventful. Not bad. Nice, nice. 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 Um, is there anything you'd like to do before the day is done? Any scrying, any messaging. I will actually borrow, uh, see if I can borrow a piece of paper from Caleb and just, uh, maybe just a scrap and see if like he has any good oh, cartography take skills, like, just like a Take his five or six complete pieces of paper, get oh, whatever you oh. need. Oh, well, I mean, is that expensive paper? You can use my sketchbook. Oh, yes, 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 please keep your expensive paper. The sketchbook is far easier. Just, I mean, you might totally screw this up. Thank you. Um. Uh, if Could we you to just ask her any more questions? We, well, we can't do that now, but in a nine days or so, ten days. That's how long I waited. It's it. a long time. Yeah, you, you I do can. that. It takes a toll. I definitely can come up with questions for her. It'll be a while. Uh, Dagan, I wanted to see how you'll. Map drawing skills actually would. You want to take a gander at just giving a rough, <laughs> just a rough sketch of what North Vale might look like to your you know, best of your ability. <sighs> yeah, I figure the weather's not too bad. Pass it on over. You're okay. You're good Takes it and kind of puts it over his lap and begins to take this piece of like rough charcoal and it's kind of sketch out. Um, <laughs> well, that's no fun. That was a that was a two. Uh, <laughs> he hands it back to you and goes, "I mean, that's about as good as I can recall." And it, it's, um, <laughs> I mean, it, pages it's, <laughs> it's a Rorschach test with less ink. It, it, it. <laughs> There, there's a point where he goes like, I'm at, "There's Bale and Post, and that's where we're going. Is is the or and up there's where that crater was place I was telling you about. It's about another." I don't know. Mm. Is this an organ? <laughs> what? No. What? I draw on it. On. And wipes his little oh. patch of uh, spittle from it, where he got excited and kind of like Pah. that. Some improved it somehow. Um, thank you. This is wonderful. I feel like you have an Etsy shop waiting in the wings. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I put it in my pocket. I appreciate the joking facetiousness. I just am not an artist. Nope. Uh, I'm neither am I. No one for cartography, but I know where I'm going. All right. And he keeps pushing on for the rest of the day. Um, Actually, um, at a certain point when uh, Dagon is um, ahead of us leading the way, mm -hmm. we'll wait till he's preoccupied, something that occurs to me that I want you all to put in the back of your head is that our um, friend here, uh, probably is in some amount of contact with the other members of the assembly, but not anymore. And uh, Ikathon, at least, has some idea who she is with at the moment, so. Mm -hmm. Well. He may be hunted. At least we have the benefit of knowing that probably no one's going to teleport here for us. Probably. They knew she was coming here, they knew she was going to be off the grid, so to speak, for a little bit. Possible communication can't reach this place exactly. very well. Possibly. Plus, maybe we can use the, you know, to our advantage the fact that um, Cerberus assembly members don't really seem to give a fuck about one another. Uh, I don't know if I would go that far. I think they probably all loathe each other. Some of them, but I don't think they would take kindly, all of them, to having their uh, colleagues wiped out. One by one. <laughs> anyway, keep your head on the swivel. Oh, wait. yeah. <clears throat> That's all. What, what, what is the plan? What is the plan? Because we kind of we came up with a temporary plan that buys us a little bit of time, but uh... yeah. I don't know. Yeah, me neither. What do you mean? We're gonna go search for stuff, find Molly Mock, bring him back to his senses, get that book, go back to the service assembly, and use it to take down the whole thing. 
Yeah, but Lady Daragna, what do we... <clears throat> well, in the short term, we could probably play stupid at our first stop. Mm. She's not here, we haven't heard from her. You could try to communicate with her and maybe not be able to reach her or make up her response. Mm -hmm. She's in your um, amber, right? Yes. Mm. If someone tried to scry like we did on Molly, would they just see your necklace? Well. She's dead. You can't scry on a dead thing. Yeah. Yes, Didn't you can. we? You can? We scryed on Molly. Oh, shit. Should I maybe give you your. Molly wasn't dead. Pendant back. I scryed on Molly's grave site. Right. You can scry on a location and you can scry on a creature. Yeah. So but you can't scry on a dead person. Yeah. But true. if they tried to scry, it wouldn't work. But I thought all of them were protected against scrying anyway. That's uh, fair. Yeah, but she's dead, and she didn't have anything on her—no items, no. So we no, no, it was picked cake. clean. Yeah. So if somebody starts looking for something that was on her that they knew was there, they wouldn't. They wouldn't find us. They exactly, would they anywhere. would find Molly and Co. Molly right. and Co. As long as no one can track the item inside your necklace again, like like for the crystal clove. Mm. Well, that was a whole other thing entirely, I believe. I kind of like crystal clove. Crystal clove. <laughs> we'll be fine, we'll be fine. Ah, it's nice. Beat poetry. Mm. <laughs> Daddy-o. All right. How's it going, Dagon? <laughs> As you guys are like cresting up this nearby hill, you can see the light in the sky is beginning to dim, you begin to get the sense that a colder night is to arrive soon, and he goes, I'm keeping an eye out. I think I found a patch where we can go ahead and set up camp out here. I'll show you all how to live nice and comfortable here in the snow overnight. It's a trick to staying alive in this freezing cold. Come, let me show you. And he lowers the, um, the metallic piece down, and you watch as he leans forward and sleds out of view on the other side of the Whoa. hill. Oh, oh man, no. that's... Whoa. Should we try to keep up? Yep. Let's sled. Who's got something? Oh. Oh, I got a shield. Last time I did Great. this, it did not work out well. Yeah. I'm going to sit I'm going to put my shield on the ground and sled down. <laughs> yeah, go. <laughs> Both Jester and Caduceus rush mm. up to the top and then jump on their shields and shh. Much faster than you were expecting. Um, it's always true. You watch as, as, as Dagon comes to the bottom of the hill and he's kind of guiding himself left and right, leaving this kind of zigzag trail. He's done this a lot and has very, very uh, intense control over it before skidding to a stop at the base of the hill, and as he turns around, noticing you guys coming behind on both sides, he goes, shit, and like quickly wheels backward. I need both of you guys to make a dexterity oh, saving throws no. for me, please. Uh oh. <laughs> We're gonna clock our guy. Natural one. Oh, oh. no! <laughs> Ooh. 19. 19. So, um, you manage to maintain control. You go spinning and spinning and spinning, but you come to a rest without issue. As Dagon kind of lunges backward out of the way, you skid into the bank where he had ground his wheels into the ground, trying to get out of the way. And as it does, it hits the shield, goes head first into this little dirt patch, and you go flying. <laughs> You guys all get to the top of the hill and glance over as you watch this impact. And Caduceus gets thrown about 25, 30 feet to the air before like his limbs all splayed out on an ice sheet as he just spins, yes. <laughs> slowly coming to a stop, oh, no. face down in the snowy. I get up and run after run. Caduceus. That's something seeing a seven foot tall dude go windmilling. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you take three points of bludgeoning damage. Oh, that's fair. But what about his pride? <laughs> oh, that's far more damage. <laughs> that's gone. You okay? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I run over and. Grab his sun hat and put it back on his head. Are, can you get? Am I on like an ice sheet or something? Or am I? Do you have a sun hat on? You don't have a sun no. hat. On. What do you have on? <laughs> Winter hat. I don't. I don't have. I have a hat, but hat? I wasn't wearing it. You don't have a hat? I do. I have oh. a little thing, but I don't wear it all the time. It's very cold up here. You should yeah, probably put it on. It's a little, it's a little flat cap. Um, I'm going to fish out a bit of cat mint and bring up cat's ire and uh, just have the giant cat's oh. claw sit upside down in the snow. Join me. Yes. And we sit down together, and I basically just control the upside down claw down through the snow like a slit. Okay. You both kind of glide down. Hey. <laughs> to answer your question, Caduceus, um, and there are some regions of, especially in 
kind of small valleys between hills or areas where the land tends to swoop down a bit. A lot of the snow eventually just kind of congeals into oh, ice okay. towards so the it's bottom. Just a slick. Yeah, it isn't like an open lake or anything, oh, okay. but you just manage to land in a slick patch of solidified ice and just skid out for I'm a moment. I'm going to crawl out of it. Right. Grab my yeah. Have I'm you ever gonna... tried to run downhill in snow before? Mm -hmm. I, I want to try something. Okay. I'm going to take out my skin gorger and use it like a snowboard. <gasps> That's <laughs> the worst thing! So I'm going like, to take it up, pick it up. What could go wrong? <laughs> And then head down. All right, as you as you jump onto it, your <laughs> your so first stupid. your first foot hits yeah, or your, shot. Your, <laughs> your back foot kind of leans against the back as the blade <laughs> spits up, almost like you're stepping on a over the front of a rake. The the blade comes up a bit. Sick. You put your put your other leg on the front and then just begin to lean to let the weight hit as you hit uh. the fulcrum point and then. <laughs> Faster than you're expecting, suddenly being carried down at an extreme speed. Your hair. <laughs> you guys just watch Yasha become this this blur of black against a white snowscape beneath you. I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Oh god, it's a very, very, very sharp weapon. Okay, okay, okay. Oh yeah, that's so... true. It's like a missile heading towards our friends. Oh, I have advantage. I have advantage on Dex. Caleb, there's a sword coming okay. towards us. We'll just go. Let's go uh, Fifteen. 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 As you are gliding down, you see that one bit of dirt that Caduceus' shield is still lodged in, and you go, oh shit, and you pull back a little bit against the, the back of the blade, and as such, you actually catch the shield as opposed to, to just digging into the bank. What it does, though, is launch you yes. a little bit, kind of, yeah. you get some air on Skin Gorger. Yes. Touch, touch the board. Get some air! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go grab. Yeah, go grab. <laughs> or a heel grab, let's heel do grab. heel grab. There you go. Win the games, bro. Heel grab. Ridiculous. <gasps> <laughs> uh, you, in a surprisingly brilliant display of control, your first time blade boarding. Um, I just picture slow motion over my head. Yeah. <laughs> you eventually hit the same patch of ice a little, you know, a number of feet away from Caduceus, grinding into it before coming to a stop. You can see as the back of the blade, as you're holding it upward, you're actually sending a bunch of ice shavings into the air before eventually coming to a stop, and there is I'll this. I'll do one of those, and then um, get Caduceus all <laughs> sprayed with ice. There you go. Look. Ah. Whoosh, Caduceus, you are immediately coated in a light layer of shorn ice. Oh, hello. <laughs> Yasha invented snowboarding. Cannon. <laughs> Somebody's not getting you know? shaved ice. Uh, I'm going to start collecting. Sure. Where'd you there go? <laughs> We're just running down just the hill. Running? We're <laughs> racing because oh, we yeah. got shit. No. <laughs> Run down the nice hill. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to roll for this. It's it's. Pre I mean, it's not an easy trek down. You're both eventually going in like waist high snow, like <laughs> having to grind through. Yeah, but, but she's it's competitive. It is. Yeah, she's a monk, racing. and she's much faster than you. Oh, you know, you uh, know that. Yes, I do. It's on her character sheet. <laughs> and so you get about you get about about halfway down the hill before you look up and notice that Bo's yes, already at the do. bottom, like Sonic the Hedgehog, arms <gasps> crossed, like tapping her foot. <laughs> Yes, you do. It's on your character sheet. <laughs> I lost my shoe. I lost my shoe. <laughs> oh, how far back? It, I took. Uh, you didn't see how long I was sitting there. Oh, I think I see it at the top of the hill. Oh I'm no! I'm wearing it now. It's, uh, no. <laughs> good, good job. Good, good run. Good. Yeah, that's good. That's good. If you want to resume your training at any point, let me know. Oh, I never stopped. It's not, I've gotten any better. <laughs> but yes, maybe we need to increase our reps. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think I found a place. <laughs> you guys look over, and this little bit of a this valley area of some hills in the nearby space, you can see one of one of the hills kind of comes to a brief cliff, and there's a tiny alcove underneath it where icicles kind of glide down these thick icicles that some of them come almost five, six feet long from the edge of the cliff to where they stop, almost giving this weird cage aesthetic to this maybe 12 foot tall little shaded alcove under this edge of the cliff face. Um, there you can see Dagon is kind of putting one of his sacks over onto the ground uh, next to where he's, he's uh, situated and goes, all right, well, this will be a place to bed down for the night. We'll go ahead and uh, build a fire and this will be a, enough of an area to keep heat for at least a semi-comfortable night's rest, so we don't freeze in our sleep. Is the cliff face uh, all ice, or is it stone and ice? Uh, as you approach and look, it, it looks like there is stone nice. and ice. Um, there are elements of exposed stone, but even they have like some ice crystal on them, but you could probably melt back or carve <laughs> back a bit of the ice to eventually get to stone. 
Do we, uh... Are we camping or are we glamping? We'll probably wait till he goes to sleep, and then we'll go into Caleb's. Well, you've already used your mansion for the day. Oh, Uh, wait, what? Is this the same day? It's the same day. Well, I was going to, I I didn't think it was the same day, but I was going to say, I think we should learn something here, because we could be without magic. We're going to be here a great while. Let's see. That's true. How things are done. Okay, if you summoned your mansion, though, is there a possibility that, like, you could summon it in the abyss. Oh, right. I don't know. What if we it... went in and then we came to step out and all of a sudden we were in another plane? Well, his magic is weird here? His magic is weird here. Oh, we might want to do a night where we like test it. <laughs> what if we went in and instead of cats, it was like turtles. That's my Boars, it would be your night. <laughs> that, that, you know what we could do? Tomorrow dark. night, when you're able to cast it, we could cast it, could send Frumpkin in, <clears throat> And then have him come back out and see, like, if he was like mutated or something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he ge- it generally disapparates, you know, in like a puff of uh, <laughs> f- fake cloud. But yeah, the idea is good. Okay. We do that. But that let's study everything point? that uh, Dagon does, so that we, you know, if we are. We're still doing the dome, though, right? I mean, we're not crazy. Not tonight. <gasps> not tonight. Full camping. Full camping. Full camping. All right. Ooh. Good call. Study yeah. time. I don't like this. We've done this before. We've yeah, done this a lot. I don't like lot. it then either. That's okay. That's fair. Yeah. Never this cool. Though. <clears throat> but I will light my hand on fire and offer to help start a fire for Dagon. Dagon or Dagon? Dagon. 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 I assume. Yeah. The pronunciations hey, went a little wild last episode, but yeah. Dagon. Da- Dagon. 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 It's hard to pronounce. <laughs> Dagon. Eyebrows. So. Um, Dagon helps situate a space where uh, you take some of the snow that's in that area and kind of create a slight exterior barrier. It's maybe about a waist or so high. Ooh, um, I'm going to help with that because I like to build with snow. Okay, uh, just a little ways out in case the wind does blow through to kind of help cut where it would come through in case the uh, it picks up throughout the night. Um, with, with your help, you manage to dig a little pit Mm-hmm. In the ground, where it's just dirt, the wet, damp dirt, um, and begin to set up what you would normally for a fire. Um, you easily provide, and he's like, "Oh, see that? That makes it a lot easier. Appreciate that." Um, once you get the fire going for a bit, you can see it kind of lights up, and eventually the water droplets start falling from the icicles overhead that are beginning to melt. Mm. Um, but this is a semi-comfortable camping space in the sense that you will have to probably get very close together, um, and even then, you're half exposed to the elements. And by the time you finish setting the space up, it has gotten to the point where dusk is long past, and there's just a faint bluish-purple glow to the clouds above that then turns into absolute darkness beyond the faint bit of firelight that's currently glowing the interior of this space. The temperature noticeably drops even further, and you all instinctually begin to get closer around the fire and to each other because it is fucking cold out there. But as you all gather, Dagon reaches behind and pull, opens one of his, uh, and you look at this point now behind him, you've seen it has this cloak over it, this big th- thick furred cloak that he kind of throws over the back of the chair, but he has all manner of bags, like just this huge collection of saddlebags that are affixed to the back of his chair, and he pulls out this glass jug, this like dark glass jug, and goes, if the fire's not helping you, I got other things to help. What is that? Just. It's good, try it. Yeah, okay. (laughs) It's, yeah, yeah, Uh, it is, it is, It's ever clear. It's it's just like pure grain fire. alcohol fire, but like but like it's it's also weirdly grainy. Like you can like you, you can feel oh, something like, in your teeth yeah, that kind of grinds mm-hmm. a bit. Gross. Uh, yeah, it's not the texture is odd, but it definitely does the job. And as, as he sees your expression, he goes, so "It's not meant to be enjoyable. It's meant to be functional." Oh, I can tell. Good, good. Yeah. Anyone else? It warms you up. Yeah. Warm. yeah. <clears throat> I'd be a fool not to. Wait, really? I mean, okay. Want an ice across? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> take, I take a good, good slug. It, it's rough. 
It's rough. It's fine. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, why don't you have some of mine? I'll, I'll share my flask yep, with yep. Dagon. Do that. It does I'll try stop. some of this stuff. Mm, uh, I'm much obliged. Takes a, takes a sip. Now this is some decent dainty stuff. Not too bad, not too bad. Dainty. Is that your rosé? No, it's, that's not ready yet. We had to leave before yeah, it was ready. Right. Before it was still whiskey. That's right. Um, your whiskey is dainty stuff? That's, <laughs> that's yeah. pretty bold. Yeah, yeah, I'll have that one, not the dainty. Yeah. It is warm. It, it, yeah. Around. it does, feel it does. It, it warms warm. up the chest it, area. It, yeah, yeah. It's, I feel it. Yeah, I think warm. I have heartburn issues. From now on, from the, yeah, yeah, for, like forever now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Welcome, welcome to Isaac. <laughs> I've never had a drink that's crunchy. You know, it's like gritty. You know, like a little bit alcohol. of sand got in your teeth. Yeah, yeah, not, yeah. Not normal. Yeah. Hmm. So, uh, I guess I'll be traveling for a while here. Don't mean to ask any questions that are untoward, and let me know if I'm prying. Because trust me, the less I know, in some cases, the better. But. Um, but you want to know which one of us is single? No, I was curious about what. What's your business here? I mean, you all work with the assembly. Are you <laughs> part of the assembly? Or? Are you still really in love with me? <laughs> no, she's drunk. She's drunk. No. You're a real confusing bunch already. <laughs> we but, uh, <laughs> we're independent contractors. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Not associated with any group other than ourselves. All right. See that? That's a level I can deal with. It's good to know. We've uh, done business with just about everybody now. At this right. point. Same. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who's? Uh, have you done any business with uh, the Kryn Dynasty folk? A couple, couple times. Now, they come. Yeah. They, do they come through a lot? Uh, I mean, most of my work goes through Bail and Post, just because they. Uh, Tend to pay consistently, but uh, done about two or three gigs now with some some dynasty folk heading over. They got like um, some sort of back and forth ship arrangement on the western shore north of here. Back and forth ship, like ferrying people or objects? Both, both. But um, Yeah, they didn't really keep to themselves. Not too much conversationalists, and um, you know. Then again, neither's most of the folk the assembly sends, which is why I'm a little curious. You're a little more colorful than the usual suspects. Thank you. The truth. Kind of curious about the usual suspects. Uh, ever work with the tomb takers? Tomb takers. Can't say I have. Hmm. <clears throat> What about other members of the assembly? I've, this would be would be my second round with Vess. Sorry, Lady Daragna. Um, did one run for some fella, some uh, kind of older elvish fella, about a year ago. Stern, stern type. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mar Martin something. Ludinus? The Martinet. Martinet, that's the one. <laughs> he's good people. No, he's not. No. <laughs> it's terrible. They're no, no, none of them are good people. Yeah, yeah, I assume as such, but then again, I'm not here for the company, I'm here There's for the money. There's one guy, he likes animals, he's okay, but everybody else seemed kind of shady. Mm. What was the Martinet poking about for up here? Uh, he was coming to oversee the initial, um, Discovery of the, uh, the A2 on your map there. Oh, uh, the is there something special they found at A2? I don't know. I haven't been in deep into any of these excavations. I'm not much of a delver. I'm more of just a surface guide. And what was uh, Vess looking for on the last run you went on with her? Uh, we were surveying all the existing ones uh, currently on this map, uh, or this other than that one to the east. The A question mark? Yeah. I haven't been to that one necessarily. But you've been to all the others? Been to a number of them, yeah. Yeah. And what are they like? Just ruins? Or holes? Or mines? I mean, each one of the ones, for the most part, seem to be subterranean. You know, the sheets of ice and rock above and 
someone stumbles upon a cave or digs deep enough and finds something. You know, a number of, say, about a, I don't know, decade or more ago, there was kind of a, kind of a subtle gold rush, if you will, northward, and people just started poking around with more, more interests up here, and that's when I made my way originally to try and find some work, and it's been fairly steady ever since. But yeah, I don't go much far beneath the surface, because uh, it gives me the willies. It takes another swig. Who is the <sighs> worst person you've ever escorted? Is it one of us? <laughs> Give it time. Only been a day, friend. Uh, I don't know, there was this rowdy bunch out of Silrunia with the dirty and folk. So I think I told you that's where I came from, and I don't know, too boisterous, too loud. When you're trying to make your way across landscape like this, you want to keep quiet. Just a bunch of fucking dwarves singing about what they had for breakfast, about what they had for lunch. <laughs> Tales of mysteries to the north. I mean, they had beautiful voices, but they just wouldn't shut the fuck up. <laughs> One day we got ambushed, and then I got torn apart. I was the only survivor. <laughs> so tra la la la. <laughs> I just feel bad for the poor halfling they dragged along. Oh. <laughs> wow. It's canon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I say they, they were the worst. <laughs> but you got time. Not okay. Do you remember where they fell and if that halfling had anything around his neck? <laughs> Didn't stick around to find out. Okay, well. If I see any familiar territory, I'll let you know. Okay. All right, all right. It's crazy how those mountains up there just look so misty and like. <laughs> Oh boy. Trick of the light. Oh boy. That was bad. Uh, in your experience, um, the, the wildlife out here, are they more prone to hunt in daylight hours or are they more nocturnal? Depends on the beast. Right. Here's the thing when, uh, when game is scarce, kind of matters whatever wanders in your space, you'll hunt whether day or night. True, I would hear a tale of other sailors mentioning how they animals would cross glaciers and floating bits of ice mm -hmm. for miles just to get to the nearest thing that moved. Not everything hunts for food. What else would it hunt for? Sport. Animals? Nature. Oh, I, I don't think he's talking about animals. Oh. There are many more things than animals in these parts. The monsters. Some that sneak, some that run, some that fly. Some that burrow. Oh yeah, no, you found yourself to the ass end of Alexandria, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just be thankful you got me with you. Will we be extinguishing our flame at night or going dark? Well, uh, that's the same thing. <laughs> we're not going to keep it stoked if that's what you're worried about. But you're going to need the heat. I'd say a little more than you're going to be worried about being seen. That's why we're tucked in here. Yeah, For the most oh, part, we'll be all right. I'm so sorry. This has been a very entertaining uh, sharing drink with you and educational how you've uh, built this little lean to, and, and the fire is great, but this is a lot colder than I anticipated. So I begin to start ritual casting the dome. Uh, oh. And I will fill oh, in. Wait, 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 wait. wait. The I pull him to the side. What happened to this being like a learning? Yeah, thing? I learned how I saw what he did. I saw the setup, it's Here, cold. Here. And I pull out the rod of hand warming. Are you so cold? You yeah, this is like it's a rod? book, and so only this in the first few you chapters. Keeps your chest warm. You to finish the book. There is no meat on my bones. Here, use this. Hug it to your chest. Do you want my jacket? Okay. <laughs> you can do this. Okay. Much like the younger brother in Christmas Story, <laughs> Caleb is now suffused in layers. Ooh, a zeppelin! That's mine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is this is gonna suck. All right, it's gonna suck all Anyone night. Anyone having a problem falling asleep? If you let me know, so I can help with that. What, what are you just mean? gonna choke choke just us going, out or what? <laughs> just a little snap on X. A little dream tea. <laughs> <laughs> I can do about an hour of protection from energy, which will make oh, the cold same, not hurt same. so much. Mm. 
Yeah. Well, so you can fall asleep properly. I'll take that. Yeah, sure. I can only do one you at want, a time. I can, I can do you both. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Dagon, is there an unwritten code among you guides that you're not allowed to fall for the people that you guide? Jesus Christ. Or if you do, what? that you're not allowed to kiss on the mouth or anything like that? <laughs> so <laughs> Why are you asking? I'm just trying, I'm curious about you and your Oh my occupation. gosh, have you ever fallen in love with anybody that you're guiding? Have you ever had an affair with anybody that you're guiding, like a secret love affair? With or all anything? of his snuggling by Why? fire to keep <gasps> going. You said no, of course not. <laughs> Look around you, it's a fucking frozen hellscape. You want, how you want to cuddle at night to keep exactly. warm, yes. I'll cuddle to keep warm, yeah, but just it's physical only. Oh. Well, that's okay, too. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes. Look, yeah. you do what you do to survive, and fringe better. benefits come with that, that's fine, too. What if you, but emotion you know, doesn't key into this. I, what if, that's what I was saying. What you guys you, have an unwritten it code. It starts as like, it starts as just a physical thing, but then slowly over the weeks that you're guiding them, you just realize, like, oh my gosh, I think I might have feelings for them, but I can't let them know, you know, because there's an unwritten code, and then it gets awkward, and then long glances, and Then at you the know. end of the trip, you, you settle up your wages and put them on a ship back to wherever uh, they came from. And it's so tragic. And, and, and they wipe a tear, and you wipe a tear, and you don't know if you'll ever see each other again. And then you have to pretend, you have to pretend for the rest of your life that it didn't mean anything. You take that pocket of coins, and as you spend them, it's just one more memory going away. Hey, Dagon, are, are we the worst ones yet? <laughs> Getting real close. <laughs> what was their name? <laughs> Takes a big swig of the jug, <laughs> puts it back and goes, I'm going to get to sleep. He goes ahead and unbuckles himself from the chair and sets himself down in his little bundle of furs. Hold on, man. I'm really invested in this story now. I know. Where did you go? There isn't a story. <laughs> he's hiding something. He's, uh, he's got to be. I'm not hiding anything and I can hear you. We're real oh close. Oh my gosh, you know who it was? <gasps> who? It was Sheila. Oh! He stays absolutely silent. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to the bottom. We'll, we'll slowly break him we'll down. We've got a few more, few more, few more we'll I'll go. take first watch, um, and I will summon uh, the Star Razor, and I will cast uh, See Invisibility to see if there are any wandering orbs or things that are following us or keeping track of where we are. Okay. I will have uh, Frumpkin. I will not take the first watch, but I will have Frumpkin uh, keep Fort company and help look. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, it's fucking cold, y'all. About two hours into your first watch, the temperature seems to keep dropping, and it's hard to sleep. You are finding yourselves occasionally waking yourself up with your body's muscles shaking to maintain interior warmth. This is terrible, and this is the first night here. You've got going on two weeks of travel before you get to the destination of Aeor's central excavation. Um, make a perception check for me. 22. Okay. Um, about, like you keep watch for a bit, keep an eye out, you go ahead and Use your sea invisibility and kind of look out into the darkness. And it's it's odd because once again, you have the very faint embers of fire that everyone you kind of watch slowly just kind of crawl closer to as they need the heat subconsciously uh, until it's just kind of this this tangled fire pit of furs and people trying to survive, and you're kind of wedged in there with your sword. It's kind of faint glow off the runes as you look up into the darkness, and every now and then you see just faint bits of snow that fall in and then melt before they hit the ground. This faint little arcane glow appears at the periphery of your vision about 10 feet away in the darkness. Just sort of look off, play it real cool. I'm sorry to wake you. Do you smell that? Do I smell it? Yeah, that that uh, just smells like rotting eyes. 
Um, I go blind and drop into Frumpkin, and Frumpkin uh, tipples up to the little mm. snow wall and starts to just wee a little bit. Do I see anything? No. Okay. Didn't really have a plan for what happened if I noticed. <laughs> <clears throat> no. So, um, everything's quiet then, yeah? Pretty, pretty good. I think we're making good time towards the most eastern location that we're <laughs> heading to. <laughs> That one as far as far far east as we're on the map that we have. Oh well, we could certainly go far. Do I see anything when I look in that direction? No. No. We could probably go farther. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> well, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know what no, else I don't, to do. I don't know that I can go back to sleep now, Ford. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. I will actually, I'll walk out slowly, casually, in the direction of the sphere. Okay, it's it's a it's only a couple of feet, like off off from where Jester is sleeping. Hmm. I'll keep walking until I'm about what height is it in the air? Like up in the air, head height. It's about head height. Yeah, I'll just do that thing where you're like, <laughs> you're just acting like you don't see it, and I'll try and get as close to it as possible and see if it moves. Okay. It doesn't move. It's been stationary the entire time since it appeared, and it's it's. It's this, just it's just a sphere, right? It's not. It's like just this this tiny, translucent, kind of gently pulsating, arcane sphere. That's almost like. It's made of immaterial and energy, and you just barely. Can see it, and it's drifting about three feet out from where Jester is sleeping, and it's about five feet, a little over five feet off the ground. Is she, it similar to the orbs that was in, that were in the house when he saw? Yeah, like, yes, it's it's, it's actually describing. pretty pretty dang close to the spheres that you saw back in the uh, the Jor house. <laughs> I'll lean in close to where it is, and I won't look at it, but I'll say you were in the amulet too, dude. What's that? You were in my amulet, which oh. dispelled those things before. That's true. He's wearing the dis the amulet that oh, spells. But what right. I think it just hides. Well, I mean, I know, you. but if we had instances it. where it. You are hidden from kind of divination magic. You cannot be targeted by such magic or perceived through magical scrying sensors. Right, but it's not looking at me. I'll I'll lean close to it and say. It seems like we're not the only ones watching. If you try to harm my friends, we will hunt you down to the ends of the earth. Keep your distance. And I'll walk back. Okay. You're attuned to that necklace? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I took off the ring of fire resistance. <laughs> Someday okay, someone will inherit that ring, though, and it'll be really meaningful. Yeah. <laughs> Look, we're a long way away from the lava, okay? There's still time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You watch it as you sit back down. Then, eventually, it just kind of vanishes. I'll go back over to Caleb and say, there was another scrying sphere eye. Someone is watching. Oh, great. Take your pick on who wants us dead. The Empire, the Dynasty, Molly. <laughs> My money is on the Tiefling. Our scent, he said. Scent. Our blood? Our blood. Maybe. Do you have any idea how to counteract that? Blood magic? Well, if it's that, no, I do not. Uh, gods, it's cold. It is. 
All right, I'll keep an eye out. Okay, for the remainder of your watch, nothing else catches your attention. <laughs> Second watch, who's taking it? Okay, both of you guys roll perception. Fourteen. Twelve. Okay. You guys catch the point in the evening where the deepest cold hits. When your breath, even amongst the embers, which have slowly died to this faint source of orange, dull glow. Uh, in this pitch black, though, it still is enough light that your eyes adjusted. Uh, you can make out the shape of your friends around it, and you can trick yourself into believing that the heat there is still useful. But your breath now becomes a perpetual fog in front of you. Um, you can feel the edge of your nose go numb, and beyond this little alcove, the faint snow still falling, the wind picks up ever so slightly, but you don't notice anything else in danger, nothing else beyond just the weather. The terrible discomfort. I crawl over and tuck under Caduceus's uh, mm. arm. We can snuggle. Got a, got a, got a cloak. We cloak. Okay. <sighs> this is awful. <sighs> Someone once said pain is good for you. Who said that? I don't know. They're terrible people. They're horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We should make sure that Caleb uses the dome from now on. I, I, I respect the learning experience, and I feel like we've all learned a lot. I feel more mature now. Oh, you, you seem more mature. Thank you. <laughs> all right. We'll say for the purposes of the evening, the rest of the morning light begins to come in. Uh, I would like everyone to make a constitution saving throw for me, please. Oh. Saving throw. Yes. Everyone? Everyone. Natural 20. Mm, same. 25. Nice. 16. Okay. 16. Okay. Nine. Ooh. 19. 18. Damn, look at you guys rolling high, except for you, Sam. You take a point of exhaustion. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. <clears throat> exhaustion one. I love your transmuter stone. Except he did at the beginning of the night have protection from energy. For yeah, one I, hour. If I cast for one again, hour. Though, will it, will it, it won't undo the, the exhaustion if I cast it again on, on her. No. Yes. Uh, protection from energy again. No, no. The, the exhaustion is there. It's a whole night of very tenuous sleep in a very harsh environment that caused it. So, um, but nevertheless, as you guys all come to consciousness, you see that uh, Dagon is already situated up in his chair and is currently set the fire up a little bit and is cooking up what smells like some decent meat. <clears throat> you look over and he has a little like cast iron skillet out there, and he's kind of whoosh, blowing on the flames as he's holding it over there. His kind of thick, grizzled hand holding it, and you can see the edges of it beginning to curl and burn. Like, um, I told Caleb this last night, but we had someone watching us. There was a scrying sphere in the air. Um, well, that's some bullshit. Yes. Who'd be scrying on you? Well, that's a great question. I, I'm not sure if it was an enemy or a friend, um, but Jester, it was located where you were. I, perhaps it's the gentleman, or perhaps it's... I don't think he can do it. It sounds like... Lucian, because it she scried be. on him, and he, he knows her now. It could be anyone from the assembly. I mean, does does Lucian they, know they, her now, though, from the scrying spell? But didn't yes. he say to her that? He, thank well, you no, for he wouldn't have seen me. He would have seen like a little ball, you know. Yeah, right. but maybe he has some magic that can backtrace it. I mean, he said, he said when you when you scried on him last. Oh. Thank you for leading me to you, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, he said oh. he caught. Our scent. She is also covered in eyes. Seems to be a motif. Blood magic? Yeah. Probably. Does anyone well, if else? If that happens again, just wake me up. I can dispel it. I gave someone blood ages ago. Was that you? It was the gentleman. What happened to that blood? I think he still oh, has it. No, the gentleman gave it to me. I have it. I have all of our blood. Yeah. See? Oh, at least we know it's not that. Wait, I thought, didn't, didn't the, 
Cree? Cree, uh, Cree yeah. Cree. Yeah. The blood. Mm. Didn't she draw blood out? She drew yeah. our blood yeah. and gave, gave the vials to, to my dad, yeah. and I took our vials from him. What, she didn't keep any for herself? That she could have, mm. but, <clears throat> you know. Make an investigation check, Chester. Um. All the vials are empty. You just never noticed. <laughs> <They're Prime laughs> yeah. Yeah. While, while everyone's debating, investigation. Caleb holds his hand out and uses control flame, and I make the, the bonfire grow two feet and awesome. a little hotter. <laughs> Dagon goes, oh shit! Don't worry, it's good. <laughs> Holds it up top. 12. 12? I mean, it's it's hard to tell. The amount you have in the vials is not a lot, mm. but you have a hard time really recalling how much was taken. It could be all of it. You don't know. Huh. I think they were almost full, if I remember correctly. Interesting. Why, do you know anything about blood magic? No. Oh, good, yep. Oh, well, wait, no. Cool. <laughs> but if it was hovering near Jester, that then implies that I it's someone like... who yeah, has recently when you, been thinking about Jester. When you do that, when you scry on someone, you can only see that person. You know, like, you go in and you see them and you can see the things very close, like if I was reading a book, they would see that I was reading a book, but they would have to really focus to try to see what book I was reading, you know what I mean? Mm. So, so it has to be focused on me if the ball was near me. Unless I was lying close to anybody else, but I mean, still, if it was it was close to me. If, if this happens again, perhaps we should have some sort of code word where Ford can say like, I'm terrible at my job. Artichokes. Yep. And you can then start spouting off incorrect knowledge about our destination or something like that. Mm-hmm. We'd also have to do a little test and see uh, if anything happens in the mansion. Mm. I think that might be off limits, maybe. Mm. Maybe. All right. Money is still on the tiefling, though, because oh. if you were the focus, it's possible anyone could have been looking at you, but who at the assembly would focus on you? Who in the dynasty would focus well, on you? Well, someone with very good taste in people. Thank you, Adam. <clears throat> I mean, he he looked back at you. Yeah, the last yeah, time but that you scried. All he could see was a ball. You know what I mean? You, like Ford, you think. wouldn't. <clears throat> you think? I don't have nine eyes tattooed on me. I just saw the. What would I have looked like if he could see me in the little ball? Do you think it would be like? Fish eye like thing. a fish eye, yeah. yeah. I <laughs> like, well, would you, you have seen like my facial reactions as he was talking to me? Because I didn't think anybody could see, you know, so I wasn't being. <clears throat> you were sleeping with your mouth open, if it's any consolation. Are they drooling? Oh, it's frozen. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know nothing about blood magic, whatever the fuck y'all are tied up in. Sounds real complicated, but. I got some bacon. Bacon? Oh, it's not real bacon, it's wolf bacon, but it's yeah. similar wolf texture. Bacon. Wolf bacon. Yeah. Okay. So, serve, and there's, it's actually a pretty solid slab here. He's like, I figured this would be a nice way to welcome you after your first uh, night out in the plains. Everyone sleep okay? Oh, I we did it. <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow night, maybe like better. frozen log. It's not gonna get better, so we tuck up. Lesson, yes, hard lesson learned. All like wise lessons learned. Yes. Seasoned travelers. So much character. So built much. Last night. Yeah. Just barely slept. Good, good. Bushels well, of character. It's early, we should get moving. Okay. He goes ahead and pushes some dust over towards the flame. He says, if you don't mind lowering a bit. Uh, do you want to get rid of it or just to bring it down? Get rid of it. I extinguish it completely with a wave of my hand. Well, that's easy, and he kind of wipes the ash in his palm on his top and goes, all right, get our stuff. He puts all the things in the back of his chair. Ready to go? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. Miss Follow me. Already. Come on, Sheila. And begins wheeling around outside of the alcove and heading back into the plains. Now, I would like somebody to roll another d20 for me, please. Who rolled it before? I did it last time. Okay, you're up. I'm doing it. Don't fuck me, go. Ah. 15. Okay. 15. You travel for about four or so hours into the, the cold expanse. The snowfall is still gentle, but the temperature is still freezing. And now that your body has spent an evening in the elements, uh, it seems to cut even deeper than it should. 
uncomfortable as it is, Caduceus and Beauregard. Oh, shit. Oh. You both keep an eye kind of a little ways to the northwest of where you are, and you see something protruding from the snow that has a texture unlike the surrounding rock. Uh, Dag uh, Dagon, is that normal, that, Dagon. that thing? Dagon? Dagon. You call me whatever you want, it's fine. Oh, Dagon. I mean, looks like a rock. Does so, it? Does it look like a landmark or like a... Is it moving at all? Or? Yeah. It's pretty stationary to me. Want me to go check? Uh, what does everybody think? Starts making his way over. Oh, never mind. Mm -hmm. Let's keep up. Yep. Nope. Don't okay. separate the party. Okay. As you get closer, you see what looks to be an ice-coated column that's protruding about six feet from the rest of the surrounding ground at an odd angle, like a, uh, a weird... Ruin? Like monolithic ruin-like column that's just sticking out a Okay, bit. let's go over, yes. Yes, is this yes, one yes. charted? Is it on the map anywhere? Yeah, 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 Did we yeah, find yeah, a ruin? We, uh, is, this, uh, is this an excavation site? I don't think so. If we've been heading north from Balin posts, well, hmm. there could be things that are could not be on un the map. Off the map. Uncharted. Yeah. He's been yeah. talking you guys a little close to the mountain Uncharted. to try and like, you know, keep from being way out, open in the plain. Um, he's like, oh, I mean, I've. That was something. I'm uh, sure, I pass this time again, but generally don't, you know, poke too close. Detect okay. magic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, casting Detect Magic, there is a faint magical aura about four feet beneath the snow surface where it's poking out of. Um, and it is it's a fairly strong necromantic aura to it. Ooh. Ooh. Detect Undead. No sense of undead. Detect there. everything else. There's a. Couple. Detect narrative plot point. <laughs> <laughs> There's something weird with a kind of undead necromatic vibe about four feet underneath this thing. How far away is Could it? Could be from dangerous. Us right now? Uh, from, from where uh, Dagon kind of stopped making his advance towards it, it's about 15 feet. Oh, 15 feet. 15, 20 feet That's from That's not far. And this is all snow, right, man? Is this dirt, rock snow, or just snow? Uh, it, it's just snow around you, uh, especially after a night of snowfall. Um, as you step through, your feet occasionally find frozen ground beneath and stone, um, you know, where, where the ice and snow packs through eventually. Do we want to maybe melt? Yeah, with like sacred flame or well, something? Uh, uh, before yeah. we, think before we do that, the column, down. what does the yeah. column look like? Does it have markings? Is it just brick, stone? Do you go in, in okay? Let's go, we go. Keep some distance. You go ahead and get closer, and you can see um, it has this faint kind of scrolling across the surface. It just looks like a, like a rough stone texture, but the closer you get, especially uh, you three, um, you can see there's these almost geometric lines that connect around it. Um, and there are these little kind of carved small spaces. On the, on the pillar. On, on the pillar itself, yeah. The like lines reliefs? are on the pillar? <clears throat> Correct. They're like carved in it. Or just arcane in general? Uh, you get the sense with your experience that they're, these type of designs can be used to connect elements of arcana. Mm. Um, or it could be just um, design work inspired by. Yeah. And do the spaces look like uh, damage to the pillar or reliefs that an object stick might something fit in. into? Make an investigation check for me. Things giving me the EBGVs. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. You can tell as you get a bit closer and look over it that there were a number of settings in this that once held stones or something smooth and round. Mm. Um, there are multiple places in these designs where these, and of different sizes, it seemed though still roughly around the size of a gold piece, um, where these stones were inset, but now you look on the outside and you can see bits where the stone has been carved and chipped, where somebody has probably pried them Dug out. something out. Anything left behind? Uh, within that space? In any of the spaces. Uh, any of those spaces that are visible right now? No, they're all, all in. Maybe beneath this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's start melting the snow is around it. Is it, it icy or, or, or snow? 
Uh, I mean, it's it's snow on top, but if you start getting close enough to dig underneath, um, about a foot of snow leads to just solid ice. Okay. Before we dive into this, remember what Dagon told us that sometimes scavenging isn't, isn't worth, worth it. it. Yeah. Right. Sometimes it's a. So before we start. Yeah, but I mean. This is not a body. I did actually say that. <laughs> you did say that it was very wise. You were very drunk, but it was very wise. It was. Uh, Usually the two work well together. Yeah, I, I agree. But I think before we go into this, how long are we going to spend time on this before we decide Four to days? move on? No. I'd, I'd, <laughs> I'd be okay with no more than an hour. No uh, more than an hour. Maybe it's not like an entrance anywhere. Maybe there's just like a pillar. It's just a marker. There's, These there's things bodies. can be rabbit holes. They can keep going for forever. It depends on what's worth it. Why, why are we here? There's something about four feet down, and it's giving me a bit of a bad vibe. It could be an extra stone, you know, just underneath. And Caleb, you couldn't read any of these markings, right? That's not a language. I or... assume I would have been able to. Uh, my sight. Make an arcana check. You don't have to cast anything anymore? You can just read things and. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, I have done a lot of study school. for a long time. How uh, many languages do you speak? Uh, four. Yeah, but well, one of them speaks Latin. 24. Can count. 24. I can speak five. I know more languages than you do. Oh, you're okay, so smart. Okay, not a competition. Okay. <laughs> Only not um, a competition. <laughs> best you can assess, um, these designs are meant to connect different arcane power sources. Um, you, what bits of equation work have been woven into the stonework? is a little out of your specialty. The language being used is some variation of Draconic that you can get the essence of, but it's it's like somebody took, took the language you're familiar with and began making their own kind of pig Latin version of it. Well, let me, everybody, take a, take a breather. Let me try something. I spend 10 minutes and, um, uh, do some muttering and wave a bit of uh, soot and salt in the air and cast Comprehend Languages and take another look. Okay. It helps a little bit. These, <laughs> these, these are less, oh, it's less of a written language and more of an, of an arcane uh, equation language, if they make yeah. sense. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't give you information regarding any speech or ideas that are come across, but what you are able to ascertain is this pillar was used while it has a strong necromantic ore that he uh, figured out, all of the geometry around it has a heavy abjuration um, feel to it. Some sort of defensive, protective magic, or was, as of design, mm -hmm. though all the gems that are visible appear to be missing. We're standing on a tomb. Could be. What is abjuration stuff? What is abjuration stuff? Oh dear, that's the. Uh, You're a magic right? user. You know all about this stuff. The, you think? No, the traveler doesn't tell me like what kind of magic I'm using. He's just like, here, here's some magic. You can <laughs> use it to, you know, change your appearance. I don't know what it. That's fair. Yeah. It's very true. Hi. What do you What do you think, Caleb? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, uh, it's to keep uh, people out of something. I don't know if it's a door or a tomb oh, or a gate. Sucks. I always want to see what they want us to keep out of. And go. You want me to try to try to chip away some of the? Yeah, I mean, I'm. No, 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 not that. We could melt the ice. Yeah. Oh, what are we talking we could about? Melt it. Of course, we we're gonna melt the snow ice. Out. Yeah. Do it. Melt it. Melt the ice at least. I'd help with the snow well, clearing no, no, brigade. Every, but with your hand? Dagon goes. Safer then, back up. All right, room, all right, let's back all up sorts of interesting, and then wheels his way a safe distance from oh, what you guys are doing. I've got you on, on, yeah, on deck. Like 50 the, feet back. Yeah. Back up, with back me. up, back up. Yeah. Right. So I take out the catmint again, and uh, uh, Frumpkin floats in front of me for a moment and then vanishes, and there's a gigantic cat claw, and the claw just goes <laughs> and just starts digging. Huge. All right. Heaps of and snow you watch the as the arcane cat claw begins to just carve into the ice and pull it away in chunks as it breaks and cracks and grinds it to the sides like a terrifying arcane. Uh, <laughs> what are they called? The cat? 
<laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say like 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 the the, the ice chisel machines. Oh, anyway. Snowcat. Damn it. Snowcat. Snowcat. There you go. Um, a short time, you begin to pull away all the snow and ice, begin to reveal more of the pillar. Excellent. And about five or so feet down, you can see uh, where a lot of these grooves all begin to come to a f- little larger than a fist-sized, uh, smooth, emerald-like gem <gasps> that still remains affixed into this pillar. Are you still getting a, a read on that from this uh, I, my It's 10 minutes, I, we're long gone. Oh, hold on. But my guess is that's it's what I was It's just in reading. the ice? No, it's in the pillar. It's, it's, it's in one the of the pillar. stones that didn't get taken out. I think nice. everyone that pulls the gem out just dies. All right, I'm going to I get know, within uh, 30 feet of it, and I will cast Detect Magic. Okay. Very strong necromantic uh, energy emanating from this gem. Oh, boy. Totally take it. <laughs> I can so, go grab it just with one well, hand if we need could. to. No, I wouldn't. We're going to have to <laughs> it, it, <laughs> chip it out. Yeah, it, 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 is, it, it would not be easy to remove. It would need to be worked to be removed. I'm, I'm, this is I'm, literally the, the stupidest thing we should be doing. We yeah. should just keep going, this, right? This pivoted the entire campaign one, but we are fucking with it right now. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We should just the, go. The necromancy just thing. Just keep going, right? No. It would need to be worked. How long thing. have we been working? How working. long have we been 20, here? 20, 30 minutes? Oh, uh, at, at the pillar, I'd say about 20 minutes. Yeah, we got 40 minutes. <laughs> Is the juice worth the squeeze? Well, you got like a mage hand, right? Is the juice. Sure, that's not going to be able to pry something out. I could can go. Could it take a dagger? And yeah, but. Like that? <laughs> um, a little. Uh, I'm going to try another thing. Everyone back up. Again, come back 50 feet, 50 yep, feet. Backing up. 50, 5 0. Yeah, and I start uh, waving my hands in the air and uh, will reach out with my hand and use telekinesis to pull it, the gem out. Okay. Uh, go ahead and make a. And there goes our wizard. It would be a strength <laughs> check with the with if it gives you a strength value in telekinesis, or you would uh, use I your. I think it's my DC. Uh, you move. You can try to move an object that weighs up to one thousand pounds. If it isn't being worn or carried, you automatically move it up to thirty feet in any direction, but not beyond the range of the spell. If the object is worn or carried by a creature, you must make an ability check. Correct. Con, uh, contested by the creature's strength check. Right. So so go ahead and roll an intelligence check. So add, roll d20 and then add your intelligence modifier. 12. 12. As the telekinesis pulls on it, it does not come free. However, it begins to pulse slightly. <laughs> there is this darkened shock wave that in a split second uh, heads out for 60 foot radius. No, oh, we're 50 <laughs> feet away! <laughs> F- we're 50 feet back. Yep. I need everyone to make a constitution saving throw. Please. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We've learned nothing in five fucking years. <laughs> oh no. the day Did we all just up? die to this DPK? Nothing. Constitution saving throw. Yes, please. 22. 22. Na, 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 19. Nice. 14. 14. 22. All right. 17. 16. All right. So, raise your hand if you got over, if you got 18 or higher. All right. Uh oh. You roll the other half of this. I love you all. The other half of this. It's been a joy, it's been a pleasure. This was worth it. It's nothing. It's nothing in the middle of nowhere. It's 15 out of 20 <laughs> options. So, uh, Yasha, Jester, <laughs> and Ford, uh, you all take 26 points of necrotic oh, that's damage. Not that bad. That's not I, I'm resistant, so. So you take half that. Okay. 26? We're about to take. You take 13. 52 points of damage. The rest of you take 52 points of necrotic oh damage. Oh my god. Uh, hey, at least roll. you're not dead. Oh. But we're all cursed. Dagon also takes that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> One. Okay. Um, Matt, it's, it's yeah. Dagon. <laughs> Sorry. Dagon. Dagon. You guys are fucking me up. Holy shit. Do you want us to die out here? 
I don't even remember what I said it as now. Like it's it's gone around so much now that it's just an amorphous name. I made a dag and dag and dag. Sure it's it's Dagen. That's and probably I why. I remember it being not Dagon, Dagen. So it's Dagen. <laughs> right. I, I was trying to make it as far away from Dagon as possible, yeah. and then I don't remember what I said it as, and now it's just whatever. Dagen. If it's loosely near the name, he'll answer to it at this point. I'm sure he's heard all sorts of variations of it. I'm gonna call him Dagoon. 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 So, Dagoon. you all hear this high pitched. Deck, screaming whine as this shockwave of dark energy just emanates from it around, and you feel it tear through your body, like like someone just punched through your soul for a brief second. Your breath is knocked from you. Your vision goes black for but a second before suddenly you all inhale together as once and fall to your knees, coughing. <coughs> you see Dagon's in his chair, like. Oh! All right, like I said, don't do that shit. <laughs> I warned you. You even brought it up. I'm staying. I'm, I'm getting way back next time. <laughs> Caleb says, "Not even loud enough for anyone to hear." Are we the worst? <laughs> yeah. The worst, yeah. Aren't we? Dag- yeah, you are. Dagon's alive, though, right? He's a- yeah, he's alive. Okay. Dagon's alive, but Dagon died. <laughs> Oh no, the sprinkle! Okay, he's fine. Oh, yeah. oh sprinkle! <laughs> you gotta remove it by just Diamond Ready. He Chernobyl. Huh? <laughs> oh, you look back, and the gem is, is just there where it was before. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's still there? Yeah. Like, oh. if you don't successfully remove it. Yeah, we haven't done because. shit to it. Well, let's get it again. Let's no! no. We'll, we'll just further. go farther back. Yeah, we just get, like, you know, that seemed... further away. What, 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 why, though? Can anybody tell me why? Because we could have it. Then. I walk back 12 feet. <laughs> I'm 62 feet back. 62 feet, okay. I mean, yeah, I go back 70 feet. Let just me to give be it. Safe. I'm going to take 10 minutes and I'm going to cast a healing spell for okay. everyone who's really. I, I can do <laughs> six so feet. Stupid. We have crazy shit on a map north of us. We should just go. We should. We're doing this anyway because everyone's hurt. Yeah, so but what if we need this? <laughs> we don't. <laughs> that's not going to do it. Here's the thing uh, your telekinesis spell it only lasts for 10 minutes. So if you're going to try this again, you either have to let it. You ever want to wait for Caduceus to do this? Just back up. What are you going to do? Or are you going to try it again? Or you guys? I was, back I was we'll back making up. sure I wasn't dying. I wasn't even paying try attention. Try it again. I'll what, do it here. You want to pull oh, it again? <laughs> to try it again. On your telekinesis. What's the rate? It's exactly 60 feet. Oh, then no. Yeah, yeah, just kind of like. Yeah, no, but heal him. No, 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 he's fine. So he's not going to die. <laughs> no, you need to heal me. Wait, how Turn does that work, T-Rex. though? How does that work? If he's exactly 60 feet, will he still get hit? He, there's one way to find out. Yeah. I don't have a cure wounds prepared. <laughs> oh my god. I will, I will, at fifth level, cast cure wounds on Caleb. Okay. Oh, that's so sweet. I'm in. While this is all going on, I'm going to step back and just start casting Prayer of Healing. Raise your hand if you really need it. I can take five. I do. One, two, three. Four. And you. Use it yourself. Oh, I'm using my, I'm, I'm the sixth, so. Uh, oh. One, well, two, that's all of us. I mean, 29 love... points of healing. 29. Use Yasha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so everyone gets 10 minutes. In, in 10, 10 minutes. minutes. It's nothing goes yeah, terribly still, wrong, and sure. I've backed up. Are you trying it again, or are you? Are I'm you... going to. Yeah, we're okay. all, everybody's back except gonna, Caleb, right? Yeah, just me. I'm going to put a little English on this. points of you know, Hold on, not yet. Yeah. Not yet. Not yet. Okay, wait, happens. I'm going to do. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. So here's what I'm Started going to working. do. Yeah. Everyone's like 70 or 80 feet on yeah, my yeah, yeah, back. Yeah, okay. we're 61 feet away. I'm going so, 80 feet yeah. away. So I'm going <laughs> within 50 feet, and I look at it, and then I start running away from it while looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I cast it and I jump. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Inertia! Inertia! <laughs> okay, I need you to roll two things for me. I need you to roll, roll an intelligence check. So roll d20 and add your intelligence modifier. Oh, 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 that's an eight. Oh no! Okay. The gem doesn't go anywhere. And then poof, another shockwave. Right? So, uh, roll a dexterity saving throw with disadvantage because you're not watching where you're running. Okay. <laughs> oh god. Oh, one was a twenty on that same die, uh, and but a four on the other. Oh, four. Oh, oh, no. So wait, wait, wait. As you're running, plus two. It's a six. It's a six. six. You turn. <laughs> oh, it doesn't work. You go to jump, and your foot just 
hits a big old chunk of ice, <laughs> and you just poof, skid on the ground, and then poof, does the shockwave hits head? you a second time. No, no. Uh, I need you to roll another Constitution save with it for me, Caleb. Oh no! Oh, what if he dies? Oh, that's better. Oh, it's much better. Much better. Uh, yeah, that's gonna clear it. That's uh, 17, uh, 21. <laughs> 21. <laughs> We're gonna try it one more time, right? I got, we have to. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get oh this God. thing. Okay, so you, you do succeed, which means you only take 24 points of necrotic damage. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? And then a minute after that. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> as as, as you get back up, the, you know, 27. the inside yeah. of your whole body just vibrating and pulsing with this this <laughs> deep set pain like like an aching bone bruise that but it's all over your eyes are bloodshot now the vessels in your eyes have, have in some places burst and now the whites of your eyes are are a deep red <laughs> Shit. um all the veins in your neck are like bulging right now and you, you hear Dak and go what's wrong with you <laughs> but Caleb gets up and he t and he takes his coat off in the cold <laughs> And he throws it down 70 feet away. <laughs> yeah, now it's a point of He rolls up his sleeve. Let's go! Wait, 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 wait. Take your 27. No, I'm far no, no, away no, no, from no, no. it. Take I, your 27. I'm gonna enhance ability. And uh, it won't work. It's no, no, no. New does not mean better. And I pull out cat mint and I make cat's eye appear again, which goes 120 feet and is a lot stronger. Then telekinesis <laughs> contested, and the hand flies out and grabs it, and pulls from okay. very far away. Okay. Eighty feet away. Okay. Ninety yeah. feet. Okay. Hundred feet okay. away. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and make you running backwards, and we all just keep up with it. What are you what doing? doing? I grab his coat. It has a strength Why? of twenty-six. <laughs> okay. So go ahead and. Go ahead and roll a d20, and then add plus eight according to correct. The spell. Yeah, be a plus eight. I just pass modifier. a flask to Yasha 26. as I watch. Yeah. Woo! Twenty six. Twenty six. Yeah, just. <laughs> um, the gem does not come free. Oh, oh my god! And it does still? come free. Another energy pulse comes off of it, um, catching, thankfully, nobody in the radius. Ah, he makes a snowball. Throws it. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. falls halfway, it goes halfway there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that's just not coming free through through physical means. But it I seems. want a necromantic emerald. For okay, for what I, you I didn't? Put, I could put a bomb in it and blow it up. Wait, okay. None of us knew this thing existed twenty minutes ago. I'm ready to walk away. Yo, so can't you just walk up and dispel it, Caduceus? Oh yeah, with your yeah. I'm I am not having Yasha walk as, up and hit it with her sword. As everyone's having this conversation, I get out. It's not and you're just kind of looking around. You see through the ice and things that have been pulled back. There's bones. Um, Detect undead. No undead. No, no, okay. Just dead. <laughs> just dead. Dead. Just, all the other just really but, dead. But there's a. You get the sense a lot of people have the gone through this idiots. exact process. <laughs> Oh wow! The other idiots. What okay, the other it? people that rolled fifteen. But somebody, but, but somebody got to some of the stones. I yeah, think those might not have been one. the same stones. This is the papa. I think these are the people who are trying to get this stone. Uh, I think they had a bad day. Should I? I'm ready to We're walk terrible away. at this How game. How long has it been? We are terrible at this game. At this point, about forty-five minutes. You guys have fifteen more minutes. Can <laughs> I? Should I try to? Can I look out? at some of the bones? Does it, are there any you know stuff on the body? You have to dispel it first, <laughs> if you can. I don't even know how that shit works. Just don't be point. You blank. you look and what bone shards are being exposed look to be like, you know, I can do arm that. bones. And we're talking you know hubrises yeah. and and and, and uh. You know, for femurs and, and parts of ribs that are all encased in ice that was then broken and pulled away by the cat's claw to reveal this pillar. Um, this pillar's been here a while, and it looks like some folks who have found it in the past uh, got greedy and went a little further towards the base <laughs> of the pillar. And at first glance, uh, looking around, make an investigation check for me. Got greedy. <laughs> <laughs> Seven. When that spells out everything. You <laughs> just you gather, uh, based on the bone fragments here. There's at least four co corpses. Wow. Um, just just in the, the the cat's claw pulled aside, you know, pulled aside debris. Um, you don't see anything of, of worth that isn't visible. The rest of it's just thick ice. 
He's like, I don't know how to tell you. This is He's the, like, this I, is I wrote honeypot on a sign, party, and I posted it party. 10 feet yeah, away. Right, this right. is three times. And then another we leave. Yeah, we leave. We, we go. go. This wait, is just quick. But before we leave, Jester, hmm. paint on the pillar, do not touch or something like that. So Sam, warn, we'll at least, we'll at least pay it forward. Touch. That would have stopped you guys. Don't touch. Yeah, it. right, true. We don't know how much it takes to set this thing off, just don't touch the pillar. Okay. That should just be a rule. Then how will I warn anyone? You won't. The bones will warn people. Could you just, you know, he's he's a really good guy, and if he says we shouldn't warn people. Why wouldn't we warn people? We can't, we're warning people, there's dead All people. All right, well, we'll pile up the bodies. There's a pile. Yeah, we could Don't set up the bones and then put a sign on the bones, like this is, will happen to you. This is exactly, <laughs> that. I think, I feel like this says it. Huh? I really. Huh? <laughs> This could be you. Don't I, touch. I sort of prop up some don't of the bodies, show. even though none of oh. its bones, they don't make sense. But. Yeah, it's it's just a mishmash of, of splintered bones and frozen ice chunks. And uh, yeah, it kind of looks like the bottom of your ice drawer in your freezer. It's just kind of jammed in there. Oh, what the fuck is your I feel like I could draw on the it's pillar. A mess. It's fine. We'll like just leave. It's fine. Let's get moving so we can get. We're going to. We've, we've lost. Some time. An hour. We've lost an hour. We lost an hour <laughs> against <laughs> people who were moving. Fifteen minutes to be exact. <laughs> take some paint and draw on the pillar. Good. I'm just gonna write big emerald here, and I'm gonna paint a little arrow pointing down. <laughs> oh, that's murder. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's going to bring people right to that. Well, they should be smarter than that, really. Oh. Just, uh, I don't know. That seems. Seems like a bit much. I'll actually say, if I had seen that, I wouldn't have touched this right? thing to begin with. I would have. Really? <laughs> yes. Really? For yeah, yep. that's like a cave that says free cupcakes. That's yep. a good idea. Just. Oh, well, I guess when you say it like See, that. yeah. Oh, I just, oh. It all depends. You just have to attack it from the right angle yeah. sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> that might be Leaving one of the most it. morally right, ambiguous there, things I'll you've done. JK. <laughs> 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 That's somehow even more confusing. Yeah. <laughs> Who's Poor J.K.? Here, ha -ha, Ancient JK wizard J.K. Uh. Mm. What does it mean? <laughs> All right. Moving on. On the road. <laughs> Gathering yourselves, Dagon's like, fuck. All right, second day. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get going. Yeah, as everyone starts walking away, Caleb like whips around Urt and casts Dispel Magic at sixth level at the Emerald. <gasps> oh! At sixth level, yeah. go ahead and roll a d20 and add your intelligence modifier. 15. 15. <gasps> Gas spell magic has no effect. Wow. <laughs> we lost. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We'll probably come back by this way. We'll get it. We'll get it. Enough. Someday you get the. We're going to come Sunday back and it'll, it'll be you. gone, yeah. and we'll know somebody did it. That was a meme. Got it loose for him. You swallow your pride a bit and bruised spiritually. <laughs> um, I swear to fuck, if Molly shows up holding a giant emerald, <laughs> he's so pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I just look at it and say. I killed Vokodo. <laughs> <laughs> Not you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pillars, the big bad guys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> very cute, Rick. You continue the rest of your day trekking northward with fair weather, keeping your pride as best intact as you can. Till the day comes to a close, and Dagon's like, All right, time to start setting up camp again. Uh, actually, do we want to have a conversation about setting up camp? Yeah. Did he just use the six level spell to try and get an emerald? <laughs> I don't need, it's, uh, we're good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We, we have, should we, should we mention that we have options? No. Yes. We can do whatever we need. Do you want the dome? Do you the, want the to dome. go plush? The dome's great. Well, we can go plush, though. If we go plush, people probably can't scry on us. And we probably. probably will feel better in the morning. If we go plush now, we might see how the magic reacts before shit gets hairy. Yep. Ooh, that's right. We, we open yeah. it up, let the let the cat go in, close it, or reopen it, see if the cat comes out okay. Like an octopus. Or a magic box. Yeah. Or yeah. yeah. What? <clears throat> sure. Speaking octopus of magic, very slow. Getting hairy. See. Yeah, that's why I'm saying maybe it's filled up with water. You don't know. Uh, hmm? Super funny though too. Yeah. What was your question? The underwater level, such a bitch. 
<laughs> is did we see anything get weird with it, with any of their magic that they just did at the emerald? Nothing caught your eye as out of the ordinary. Not working. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, the spells seem to have functioned as intended. There was no no signs of any oddity. All right. Let's uh. This this one will be a little weird though because it is dimensional, so maybe things will get weird. Yeah. But let's find out. Caleb. Mm, yeah. Okay. All right. So I will shove uh, Kaliana's wand into the snow and carefully, so they don't disappear into the snow. Put all the uh, appropriate pieces, and uh, the door goes. Oh, and son of a bitch! You can make doors. <laughs> <laughs> You Maybe can't make the rest of a house because that would be really convenient right now. That'd be really convenient, yeah. but you know, mages are weird. I the get thing it. is, Fine. we don't always know that I will be able to accommodate us. So we wanted to go at least one night to learn from you, and we've learned from you so much, especially today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> so, uh, as recompense for your uh, trouble, so sorry. Uh, would love for you to come stay w with us here. Uh, let me just send my cat in to make sure everything is all right. Okay. I summon Frumpkin. And is he always this uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, tell, I tell Frumpkin, uh, <laughs> go up to uh, the top and down and uh, give it a look-see. And I send Frumpkin. Close the door. Now, can you see the interior of the tower from the door that's open? Right. Uh, well, I can see into the hallway, right? Right, yeah. Cool. All right, so you send uh, Frumpkin into the inside of the tower. Seems fine. Close the door. Is there a door? Is there a physical door? Uh, it, it's up to you. The, it, it's not so much a physical door, more than it's a, a shimmering door-like arch, <laughs> with like a, a, a threshold. Yeah. I you can adjust the visual out if you want to, right. or make it invisible in, I can make it, invisible you make it vanish, all yeah, eyes, yeah, correct. <laughs> so as I'm asking, are, are you having it visible, or are you having it purely? I will make it vanish for us all. Okay. Uh, Frumpkin goes, and about eight or so minutes later, Frumpkin emerges from the inside of the tower. <laughs> Seems to be positive. I'll summon the sword and I'll cast see invisibility and do a 360 and just see if we're being watched. Okay. As the, this is being summoned. The doorway gives it like a kind of a, a stronger glow, uh, just kind of in the proximity of it. It's almost like changing the filter with a candle nearby. All of a sudden, it gets brighter. Um, but looking around you, nothing else catches your attention. No spheres. No spheres. No. We seem to be unwatched for the moment. All right. Well, Dagon, join us for dinner. Sure. Do, 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 start do, do, leading the way in. Yeah. As you guys make me in, Dagon, and like, with a little bit of uh, apprehension, passes through, and as soon as it gets inside, goes, Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Why the fuck did we sleep in the ice last night? This is not every night. This learning, we were. Just in case. Learning. When in ice will cross. Uh, How did think up? Where are the stairs? Just think, think, up. think up. Up. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> to, to glide. Him in the chair, lifting without issue. Awesome. It's like, well, I so don't need that feature for now. And he <laughs> kind of sets one of the little, uh, kind of, kind of glowing orb-looking panels on the side of the chair. Um, and he starts just continuing to float up with you. Oh, this is all kinds of wow. We have a What's for dinner? Guest rooms, right? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Uh, what is for dinner? What would you like, Caduceus? <sighs> Your call. A bit of everything. I think, ooh, mac and cheese. <gasps> ooh, that yeah. sounds good. Oh, that good. I was thinking chili. Doesn't it sound like that would be good on like Jesus a snowy? We could do both together. I think that's a really good call. Oh, yeah. Some collards. Mm. I'm so ready for this meal. I hover in the salon, uh, the library uh, chamber, with all of us, and I 
fall out of the central column and walk over and pull a rope pull by the f main fireplace here with the stained glass in the motif of Molly's coat. And uh, a cat comes out of a little uh, arch next to it, and I say, ah, Rudy, uh, good. Um, we are going to have uh, mac and cheese and then lots of vegetables and uh, quinoa, as much quinoa as we have uh, at the moment. And chili. And, and chili, vegetarian and chili tonight, though. Well, also some pancakes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Only some waffles, to get some Rudy. Too. Waffles sound good to you. Yeah, cornbread waffles. Like cornbread <laughs> waffles, Rudy. Cornbread, cornbread the chili. waffles. Yes. Cornbread cornbread waffles, waffles yeah. and also uh, waffle cornbread. Does such a thing exist? Why not? In real life, I want if that. If the cats though, can't no. make it, I mean, who can? I want it. Sounds oh, good, doesn't it? Uh, also, it's it's so good. Uh, one plate of um, My God. Uh, bacon. Real Good. bacon for our guest. <laughs> <laughs> Turns around with a slight begrudging, like, okay, mm. type of, of feel beneath the meal. Um, but <laughs> the meal is now under preparation. You can see uh, Dagon is kind of like just jutting around and just inspecting the interior of the towers. Like, ah, then. Then you weren't joking. You are. You are some assembly folk, or at least capable, though I'm usually much for sharing. Kind of glides back down. Well, we're, we're independent contractors, so. Well, I don't mind staying along with the contractors that provide a better place to sleep, I'll tell you that. Sure. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, come, let me show you your room. Yeah, please. Uh, I will start to hover up to uh, the first of the guest floors where uh, Caduceus and Yasha's room are, but there is a third room there. And when we go in, uh, it is um, stained glass with uh, wolves over the fireplace and bacon strips along the bottom. <laughs> and uh, all the same accoutrement that are in the other rooms. And then his uh, central room has got axes all on the wall and a massive wet bar with every kind of whiskey and bourbon imaginable and a couple of jugs that just have XXX on them. Uh, and a fairly, fairly traditional and basic bedroom. Got it. Glides in and goes, <laughs> A little kitschy, but I like it. <laughs> All right, this'll do. Thank you. Sure. Thank you very much. That uh, tub is uh, scalding hot when you first get in, so easy does it. Fair enough. All right, well, let's say dinner in about 30 minutes. <laughs> Dry off a bit. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Eventually, food is prepared, a fantastic spread of cat design to the specifications you required, meals that are Familiar to you, and a handful that are new to anybody, uh, as they've been created in the request stage. But um, nevertheless, a fine dinner spread is enjoyed by all. Uh, some laughter and imbibement, and eventually the evening comes to a close. Is there anything you'd like to accomplish before the night comes to a close? We'll go to the next morning. Actually, I'd like to find uh, Dagon and just say um, it's it's fair to keep you abreast of two individuals that we are keeping an eye out for. Um, for any reason, if you should become separated for us, we are keeping a lookout for this fellow, and I'll make myself look like Molly. Gotcha. And this, and I'll make myself look like Cree. Okay. These two uh, seem to be on the trail for the same sort of items, things that we're looking for. Yeah. Be wary. All right, I'll keep an eye out. Appreciate the heads up. You haven't seen them at any time, have you? I haven't, no. Fair enough. Inside check. <laughs> inside check. Do I believe it? <laughs> Make an inside check. <laughs> Roll a four. Natural one. Yeah, Natural. Better. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's a little tipsy, seems to be forthcoming. Yep. Best you can tell. Good job. All right. Anybody else? We good? I'll, uh, d a hot bath sounds really nice. So after dinner, go back to my room, run a hot bath, talk to one of the cats, request some hot cocoa. Maybe some, like, chocolate dipped strawberries? <laughs> you know, in, um, in the Chardonnay. Thank you. <laughs> Darts into the wall. As the tub is filling up, reach in my pocket, 
pull out the poem from you. Oh, right, right. <laughs> the what? The what? The poem. The poem. The poem. The poem. Oh, oh, shit. <sighs> she okay. stared at it for a moment. Oh, Bo, Bo, Bo. <laughs> well, Whoa. Put it, put it down. I stare at it for a little bit longer. Wait for my Chardonnay to show up. Chug my Chardonnay. Pick it up again. Open it. <laughs> And I read the poem. Okay. <laughs> so, um, my brain swirls as I hear Yasha's voiceover <laughs> in my head. Um, so it's, at the top of it, it's a, a whole paragraph that is crossed out and scraped and you see some words like bow and abs <laughs> and shorn <laughs> and envelop and things like that, and it's just crossed out. Um, and underneath it, bow. Uh, yeah, this was a poem, but then I realized it was a dumb poem and I can't write poetry. Sometimes I have an easier time when I put the pen to parchment, so here it goes. I've watched you. I don't mean that in a creepy way. I mean, I am a little bit of a creep, but I know that you know this by now. It takes me a minute to open up, so I watch, I observe. I take it all in as opposed to letting it all out. I guess the only time I let it all out is when I fight, which I'm not sure is the healthiest thing in the world. But here's some things that I've noticed about you. You're strong. You're a leader. You're really smart. You're really funny. You're honest, even if it hurts. But the thing that really gets me about you is that you love so fiercely. And I know you feel like an asshole most days, but I kind of like that you're an asshole. You stick up for the people you love, and you make me feel stronger. I can hold my own. I know that you know that, but you make me feel safe. I don't even know if that makes sense, but I know no matter what, You'll have my back, no questions asked. Yasha. Good. Good fuck off, the Fluffy. <laughs> Leaves the cocoa behind. Thanks, Fluffy. <laughs> Wipe away a few tears as I see them hit the paper. And I just sink into the tub until I'm underneath. And I just stay there until I think I can't hold my breath any longer, and then I stay like 20 seconds longer. And then I come up. And I do that back and forth for a little bit until I eventually fall asleep. <laughs> in the tub? Not in the tub, you know. <laughs> not, in, <laughs> not like a super. Entire Tragic campaign. Way. Not a monster could keep her yeah. down. The bathtub that finally takes her out. <laughs> Not in like a Jim Morrison way, no. Uh, <laughs> All right. Oh, wait, one thing. Can I float up and knock on Caleb's door? Sure. Yeah. Um, could you <coughs> could you cast tongues on me? Uh, I mean, you know, the spell where you can make me understand languages or whatever. Yeah, I could do that. Um, I just want to read the book, Caleb. You want to read it yourself? Well, I, I mean. Read it to you if you want. Okay, it could take a while. Well, are we talking about uh, Princeton Cat? The other cute cat yeah. with the hat. Mm hmm. Uh, so I uh, walk us in and sit us down by uh, my fireplace. 
which has no stained glass window. The furniture in here is pretty nondescript. This is a boring room, Caleb. You really decked everyone else out. Well, it took a lot of effort for you all, so no time for me. Um, Okay, so uh, this is meant for children. Okay. Uh, My mother read it to me when I was very little. Uh, It's called the the Cat Prince. The Cat Prince. Okay. Uh, Okay, uh, once upon a time in a little house, on the edge of a great white wood lived a young boy with his mother. Uh, the poor boy was sick and spent much of his days in bed, watching the days pass by from a little window in his room. Uh, the boy's mother loved him very much, but as it was just the two of them, and the boy was ill of health and frail of form, every day she had to make the journey to town where she worked in the kitchens of the local lord. Uh, While she was gone, the boy would mind the house, read one of their precious few books, and observe the bees and the trees, oh, that rhymes when I translate it, (laughs) Uh, and the birds in their flight as he spent the greater part of his time resting in bed. Uh, The boy knew that his mother loved him and that her time away was all for his sake, and he was grateful to her and loved her in return, but it was a lonely life spending his days rereading some of the same books or talking to the air in their little home on the wood's edge. One day, uh, and this is all illustrated as we go through the I hope you're showing me the pictures. Yeah, yeah, I'm going page by page. We're sitting on the couch together. As the boy sat in bed, looking out at the fields that lay between his home and the woods, he noticed a cat making its way out of the forest. A long time since I read this. Um, It was not long before the boy realized this cat clearly making its way toward his home was no ordinary cat, for upon his head he wore a little top hat. And if that were not strange enough on its own, as the cat uh, pattered up beneath the boy's window, he stood, doffed his cap, took a bow, and said, Greetings, young master. You look as if you could use a bit of dancing. Uh, The boy, stunned by these words from the uh, dapper little cat, could scarcely find his voice. Oh, no, sir, said the boy, I don't know how to dance, nor am I made for it. Nonsense, said the cat, why anyone can dance if only they look to. Come out of doors and let me show you. And as he spoke, the cat donned his hat and began to turn in circles and dance. and he's dancing on the page. Uh, The boy was curious, but said, good Sir Cat, I I am afraid I am ill. My lungs are too weak and my bones are too frail. Oh, maybe they are and maybe they aren't, the cat replied. But either way, you do not want to languish one more day in bed watching the world go by, do you? Come, take a walk with me through the fields and I will show you how to dance. Overcoming his doubts, the boy managed to climb down from his window and walk a few steps closer. This was no ordinary cat and no ordinary day. And though he felt unsure, his heart did leap a little and he began to follow the marvelous little cat through the grass, slowly at first, but with more vigor as they crossed the fields. And eventually he found himself stepping under the shade of the woods for the first time in a great many years. All the while the cat frolicked and capered as they wound their way deeper into the wood and eventually the boy found himself stepping into a ring of trees. The cat whirling about, his hat in hand, the furry little dancer twirled around the boy, laughing and calling while the boy watched his mouth agape. And then quick as a flash, the cat brought his top hat down right atop the boy's head, who was very suddenly plunged into darkness. This is going to be a sad story, Caleb. Then I turn the page. (laughs) But only a moment, because all about him, shining in the dark, he saw the glow of hundreds of eyes feline eyes glimmering in the dark. Suddenly, about him, lanterns flared to life, and the boy saw he was no longer in a wood at all. Here, he saw a grand ballroom, festively decorated and filled to the brim with cats. Big cats, small ones, old cats, young ones, cats of every breed and color, and in the center of the great hall, upon a stage, stood the boy's feline guide. Only now, he was dressed in very fine robes, and upon his head sat a thin golden crown of wrought golden leaves. He's a prince. Which is illustrated right there. Beautiful little cat. Well-worn pages. 
The boy stood in wonder and amazement as the great host of cats bowed to their prince and then in turn bowed to him. The world of men is heavy and hard, the princely pe uh, cat proclaimed. But here across the veil we move with lighter step. Dance with us, child, and forget your troubles for a spell. All at once, scores of cats closed in around the boy, purring and turning about his legs as thick as the sea. And as they moved, so too did the boy's feet. He swirled amongst them like a cork on the water, and before he knew it, the boy was dancing, dancing and dancing as he never imagined he could. And his breath, much to his surprise, was hearty and hale. He found he no longer felt ill in the least. Hours passed, and he and all the cats danced without end, and the prince of cats more than all of them. After a long while, the boy suddenly remembered his mother and immediately feared she would worry. He stopped in the middle of the great hall and called out to the prince of cats, forgive me, Sir Cat, but I can no longer stay. My mother will worry, I have to return. All the cats parted before him and the prince approached the boy. Are you sure, boy? You could stay and dance with us for as long as you wish, forever and ever and ever. I cannot, the boy replied. My mother has only me and I would not leave her alone. Forgive me. The Prince of Cats looked on the boy with a sympathetic eye. Not at all, young one. Fear not a whit. You do your mother credit. And with that, the Prince of Cats stepped closer. Do not look so crestfallen. Take our cat's grace with you. You can always dance if the will is there. And from behind his back, he brought out his top hat again and pulled it over the boy's eyes, and once again, all was dark. <laughs> Some time later, the boy stirred, and his eyes fluttered open. He looked about and discovered he had been asleep in the wood, and the sun now dappled his face through the trees. Next, he noticed a threadbare, patched top hat lying in the soft grass beside him. He gingerly picked it up and stood within the same circle of trees. As he did so, he took a deep breath and smelled the earth and the forest. And as he did, he realized his breath was strong and his legs hardy. Danke, he said, as he looked down at the hat in his hands. And placing it upon his head, he smiled, kicked up his heels, and quietly started to dance his way all the way back home. The end. That was a happy story, Caleb. Mm. That's why my mother read it to me. I really thought that, like, the cat prince was going to trap him in there forever, and then he wouldn't be able to go see his mom. Well, a lot of Zemnian stories do end that way. It yeah. is true. The it's cat prince wound. kind of reminds me of the traveler. It's true, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. A little dicey, but very likable. <laughs> good in the end, you yeah. know? Yeah. That was a really good story. I'm happy that I could share it with you. Me too. Thank you. Hmm? Can I have it back? Oh, yeah, it is your copy. It will vanish when you leave here, though, but it is yours. Thank you. All right, good night, Caleb. Yeah, good night. Good night. <laughs> you wrote that whole fucking book? Uh, some Zemnian wrote. <laughs> <laughs> <Shit. laughs> All right, good night. <laughs> now you have to tell the story to Ford. And then he has to tell it. I <laughs> <laughs> tell it to the Prince of Cats murders the boy <laughs> and all the cats. They went to like some cow <gasps> <laughs> Is that a real story? <laughs> I, was like, you were just, I know, right? And, oh God. Nobody asked Gold me to read them the transmutation book. Nobody. <laughs> Is that a real story or did you, you write you that? You really write that. I wrote it. <laughs> today. How did you, did you not even write it know today? that? I wrote it today. <laughs> she asked me to, she wanted to read it. A few days ago, so I wrote it today. Wow. Nice. Yes, it's very well done. Though. How are you? It's very sweet. That was impressive. Yeah. Well, as the evening draws to a close, a night's rest much more comfortable than the previous. 
some with dreams of uh, unique motion and playful anxiety, others with dreams of dancing cats, others with loose threads still left uncut, some of vengeance found unintentionally, some of vengeance still to be acquired, some to discover the depths of the mysteries that taught those you care about, and some dreams of accept, accepting whatever this new chapter means. And some just drank until they slept in their guest room. But with the morning, you gather your things after a hearty morning, cat prepared breakfast, Prepare yourselves to see the warm interior one last time before setting out into the third day of travel northward into the snowy fields of Isolcross. I would like somebody to go ahead and roll another d20 for me, please. I think Ashley is up. Yep. Me? Right. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Do it. Okay. Come on, come on, come on. 20, come on. What am I, what do I add? Just roll Nothing. a d20. Oh. Ooh. Uh, three. <laughs> yes! Yeah, that's what it mean anything. Could be anything. Oh. Let me find. He marked. You mm. find Santa's workshop. <laughs> uh, could you roll a D8 for me, oh, please? No. Oh, no. Follow up roll. Shit. <laughs> not good. This oh, is not shit. good. Which kind of dragon will attack? No, I think it's how many? Uh, five. <laughs> five dragons will attack. Five. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, oh. Leave it to me. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Hours pass as you press into a harsher day upon the snowy plains of Isolcross. Uh, the winds have picked up a bit, the snowfall has come a bit thick, and elements of distant ice fog block the horizon from the crisp previous day's journey. You trust in uh, Dagon's directional sense and pushing forward because at certain moments you look around you and have no idea which way is north. You have a, as good a sense as anybody, and even then you take some moment to kind of ground yourself because this landscape at times feels alien and repetitive in a very odd way. Pressing on about early afternoon-ish, uh, the clouds grow darker, and it seems like a bit of a, a storm of some kind is making its way in your path. As you feel the temperatures drop and the wind grow ever stronger, you can hear the distant howling sound of cold wind beginning to blow through the mountain range that sits to your immediate west, causing this haunting, multi-tiered, terrifying, whistling choir of voices. Caduceus and Beauregard, as you're pushing through this steadily shaded space, as you crest some hills and head into some valley portions, you swear you see something, like something in the snow move for a moment. We've got company. Underneath the snow, like like it's like, growing. Like 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 the like the snow above a hill to your right seems to move slightly. Something underneath the snow, right over there. I just track it. Look for any other signs. Okay. Make a perception check. Both of you. Twenty-two. Twenty. Okay. As you all kind of stop for a second, Dagon halts and goes. What's, what's that you're saying? Something beneath the snow is moving. He starts looking around the space and kind of reaches back and just puts the hand on the handle of Sheila. You both glance over in that direction and you catch a little bit of movement on the hill to your left as well. Behind us, separate? Separate on the other side. Both sides. 
They're flanking us. Uh, back to back, let's circle up. Yeah, I summon the sword and say the word Galisbar, and it glows in a 20 foot. Right okay, here. as soon as the sword appears and as the code, as the actual elven words are said, the, the runes ignite and the light begins to emanate out from the blade. You hear this faint shimmering, ringing <laughs> emanate from the blade itself as it is invoked. And at that moment, there's a sound. <laughs> And you glance over in the direction of where you first saw it, and you see a movement, a large arcing movement, something white move, and then a shape begin to suddenly spread out over in your direction as a large net begins to descend oh. in the direction. I need everybody to make a dexterity check. You both have advantage because you net. saw them. What? Oh, it's I have fucking... advantage, and then also. Is it a check or a save? It's saving throw. Dexterity saving throw. Okay. Six. Thanks. Natural Six. 20. Seven. Seven. Uh, one, but I'll use the Ring of Evasion to succeed. Okay. 23. 19. 18. 30 total. All right, so as the net descends, Caduceus and Beauregard, you reach out and grab whoever's nearest to you. Uh, you manage to pull Yasha aside as you dodge out of the way. Uh, Caleb, there's a, there's a an in sudden burst of arcane inspiration within you and your body shifts faster than it normally does and you pull out of the way. Uh, you rolled a? 23. 23. Uh, you go ahead and just roll out of the way. Um, for Question. Ooh. What's your question? Is this considered a missile? Not in that way, no. Oh, okay. Good. Uh, good call, though. Uh, this is a True. wide net. This is this is about forty feet from end to end. Okay. Um, however, the two of you, in trying to rush out, don't quite get far enough before it descends on you. Heavy, thick, coarse rope about that big around falls. Only patches about that wide between each, and it's weighted at certain points where it feels heavy when it falls on you. As soon as it hits, you hear. Giant. Giant. And you see rising from both sides, about 10 to 12 feet to the shoulder, these squat humanoid forms with thick, white, coarse hair across their bodies. Dull gray, almost blue patches of skin beneath where their face and hands are. You can yeah. see bandoliers of leather. You've encountered creatures like this before. These are yetis. 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 And you see them as they stand up, weapons at the hand, shouting as they crest the edge, and you see one stand up larger than all the rest. Ooh. One hulking behemoth of a yeti as it crests to the top of the hill, holding this giant, jagged-looking hook spear at the end, and just goes, Brost! And begins charging inward. And that's where we're going to take a break. <laughs> we'll be back here in just a moment. We'll see you guys here shortly. Hey, critters, Laura Bailey here. Let's see what's up in the Critical Role shop. The cuteness, it's overpowering. It's so cute, I can't handle it. This is this is a lot of stuff, you guys. We have like so many cool things right now. Oh my gosh, it's so amazing. Ooh, look at this. Look at the details. Ooh. So click on over to the Critical Role shop. <laughs> Don't worry, there's a few more minutes in the break. You still got time. I'm a fan of hot air balloon rides above the Venetian countryside. I'm a fan of Momlin. She's always got my back. I'm a fan of wine older than Taliesin. I'm a fan of Twitch subscriptions. I'm a fan of emotes by Arsqueef. They're neat. I'm a fan of a wife so cool. People forget I exist. 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 I'm a 
fan of wearing your skin as a mask.
And welcome back. <laughs> so, where we left off, you all were being ambushed by a group of Yeti here in the middle of the ice across plains. So, uh, I've just kind of placed the minis on here in the middle. Uh, unfortunately, the mini I ordered uh, for, for Dagon didn't arrive in time, so Don't you I, apologize. I customized one quickly Don't back you with other minis, cobbled it, but so I think it cool, looks fine. Man. Amazing um, DIY motherfucker. But Ooh. you guys are. Oh, jeez. How? Okay, wait. So the net is over us, but then is it? Is it? Like, are they holding the net? It's weighted. No, it's weighted down. It there are, there, are, there are like heavy stones that is woven through that are oh, kind of like okay. keeping it on the ground there. Okay. Um, you all can tell me where you want to pl get placed within five feet of the net. Um, I want to be uh, near Caleb. I like to be <laughs> under the sea. Okay, so you'll be near Caleb. Yeah. What was the Caleb, direction? Be there? <coughs> um, the yeah, that's good where I am. That's fine. Jeez. What the were the two the directions that we that Caduceus here and I? In here. All right, then I'm good. I'll turn around and look at that direction. The direction behind me. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna say the rain Yasha? shunted him, and he didn't have total control of where. Okay. Uh, I will be kind of uh, yeah, a little bit next to not, but on the other, like in between Caleb and not. Uh, not where you wanna be. Yeah, that's good. 
Um, if you want to make your game table look like what you see here with Dwarven Forge <laughs> modular gaming terrain, go check it out at dwarvenforge.com. But uh, I want to be right where I am. Woo! Okay. <laughs> or actually, put me on the other side because I know Caleb and Bo kind of pulled me back from the nets. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then <clears throat> that'll put us at initiative. Oh, yeah, initiative. Oh, right. Ooh, gotta have initiative. Oh, I love no. minis. Ready! Ah! Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, oh shit! Oh, oh, shit! That's a big yeti! Oh, he landed like Iron Man in a three point turn. That's a big puppy dog. <laughs> All righty, so if I can get everyone to roll initiative no. for me, please. No. Okay, 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 okay. No. Hey. Fuck me. Okay. Damn it. Son of a bitch. Ah. Son of a bitch. Why? I'm gonna use bit. my boots. Son of a bitch. Okay. Son 25 to 20, anybody? Nope. Son of a bitch. Cool, 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 cool. 20 to 15. Nope. 18. 18. Yeah. Oh, hey. All right, so we got? Young show, bad. Oh, right. Mm. That's dexterity. That's dexterity. It's crazy. 15 to 10? Nope. 14. Already? Oh, oh, no. Oh, 10. Quiet. Oh, thank you. 10. <sighs> 10 to 5? Six. Nine. Jester. Oh, cool. What's up? Caduceus, what you got? Caduceus. Three. <laughs> Some vax shit. Roll to one. Oh, but no. Well. Get it. Okay. Yeah, it didn't roll good. Top of the round, uh -oh. we have Veth with Yasha on deck. You just dodge the net, turn around, and hear the howling between the two sides, and what are you doing? First, I will try to. Burrow into the snow to hide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll use all my movement if I need to, to like. Thankfully, there is a lot of snow, and you are a small. Yeah. Can I like creature? run and slide and try to kick someone? <laughs> <laughs> I'll say because there is high snow here, uh, you and your size, you would be able to attempt to hide in the snow. Okay. Uh, okay. But 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 if you wish to move from your spot, it's all considered difficult terrain. Sure. No, I'm just gonna sit and hide for a second. Five, oh my ten. god, you are so close to those dudes. Okay, mm. uh, I rolled Come for on. stealth. I rolled a. Tw oh wow. Oh wow. Thirty-four. Okay. <laughs> so you are hidden in the snow. Okay. I will whip out. Just so you know. Oh. If you hide in a space, and they know where you're hiding, oh. you're not technically hiding. Damn it. You know, if you if, if there's a table in a room and you get under the table, they still know you're under the table. Um, and you burrow. So if you want to move out of that space, that will help you if you're trying to do something from a stealthy position. But as of right now, they watched you vanish in the snow, and they think you're probably where you are. You got, you got to try to Bugs Bunny it. Without making a little ridge. That's kind of yeah. what you have to do. Yeah. Making eye contact as you're digging. <laughs> You'll never find me! <laughs> oh, where am I? <laughs> so, if I attacked on this turn, it would not be a sneak attack. Well, you've, you've stealthed. You, you, it didn't spend any movement to try and stealth. You can move with difficult terrain to remain stealthy in the snow. If okay, you'd like okay, to. okay. I'll, I'll move in the snow to try to Which get. Which direction? Uh, towards the Big Yeti. This, that was some back shit. Because that right quite there. a few times in campaign one, it's like, I hide right in front of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me prepare that. So yeah? Okay. <laughs> okay. And now, so you're saying if I pop up now, maybe they'll, <laughs> they won't know where I am? It's possible. Okay. We're I'll try to do it. We're living for possible. Okay. <laughs> you know, just pop my arm out. And, and uh, we just. Oh, shoot, what? Shoot, what? And what I? <laughs> um, oh, and. You moved like go, 10 feet. 
<laughs> Surprise, motherfuckers! <laughs> and I'm gonna, I'm gonna vax this shit. I'm gonna throw a dagger. What? Oh, okay. Throwing the core cut dagger. Yeah. You got it. Okay. Dagger. Uh, dagger, did, dagger. Did, did you attune to the dagger? Bat. Yes, I did. You did attune to the dagger. I did. Okay. And sharpshooter. Okay. Ooh. Putting some. Uh, this is uh, sting I mean, all, on it. all or nothing. As a quick heads up, just so you know. <laughs> oh no. Where is it? Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I need to find it again. There it is. Okay. So, you would have realized at the time, maybe, but we'll say now because I just realized you tuned. It is a cursed dagger. Uh huh. <laughs> sure, sure. So, yeah, just all you know is the blade, it's bound to you, and you really want to keep it bound to you for now. So, does that mean I can't throw it? You can throw it. Oh, okay. I'm throwing it. But you got to retrieve it afterward. Oh, of course, it's fucking cool. Oh, you got to retrieve it afterward. <laughs> Needle in a haystack. I, yeah, I mean, it's fine. It, the, the curse doesn't mean you can't let it go. But oh. So, nevertheless, you bugs bunny your way through the snow. Uh-huh. <laughs> and chuck this dagger, go ahead and roll for an attack, oh, so a ranged oh, attack. Oh. Work, God damn it! work. Yes. <laughs> 26 minus five. Correct, so 21. So 21. That does hit. Yes! <laughs> it's the big one, correct? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so is this sneak attack damage or? It would be. Yeah! Yay! Okay. The snow, the snow works in your favor, <laughs> being a halfling rogue. Okay, this is straight up Vax roll here. Um, oh, these are all terrible. That's fine. Six, 12. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Uh, plus six is 28, plus 10 is 38, plus three more d6. Plus necromancy. Oh, these are all terrible. 42. 42 points of damage to it. Yeah. Uh, and you, you use the, the effect to. I did, so some of that is necrotic. Right, and you, but mark off a hit dice for a second. Yes, yes. All right. Got it. Jeez. So. Right as they're shouting you out to, to run, Veth just <laughs> and as the dagger's inside, it's still stuck in its chest. It's just there, kind of in its sternum. It looks angrily in your direction, and its eyes flash angry blue. I go back under the snow. <laughs> okay. All right, that finishes Veth's turn. Yasha, you're up. Okay, I can't get to it. Uh, I would like to rage. Yes. yes. Rage. <laughs> Uh. Those jokes back up. Is there a place to track hit dice? Where, where is this? Uh, yeah. I've never uh, used hit dice. It's in a. <laughs> you could just know it, too. You just mark okay. one off somewhere. Boop. Uh, I will. Um, in your short rest. Oh, there it is. Thank there you. Is. I knew it. Uh, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna actually try to lift up the, the rope to try to get them out. Okay. So um, up. Go ahead and make a strength check. Because you are raging, you do have advantage on that. Okay. That's better. Uh, that would be 22. 22, okay. Yeah. Uh, that will lift up the rope enough to get Jester free on this side. Thanks, Yasha! Yeah. And any other attempts to get free from the rope, if they spend their action on their turn, will have advantage as well. Right. But Jester is currently now free of the net. Woohoo! So that's everybody. your action. Yeah. Did you hear that? What? Uh, and that's got three of the net. Okay. Yasha. Just trying to help you guys out. Okay. That's my turn. That's your turn. Stay yeah. in there, put. All right. It is now the big Yeti's turn. Fun. The Eddie goes, like, after, after taking the blow from the dagger, goes like, Sneaky one! Oh, shit! <laughs> and is going oh, no. to go ahead and leap. I'm snow! <laughs> oh my god. Just yeah. a piece of I'm just snow. snow! It's just urine! <laughs> As it lands onto the ground next to you, eyes now glowing with light blue rage, it. <laughs> And starts swinging its giant hooked spear out in front of it. Um, 
These are going to be, this is going to be attack against both Beauregard and Veth, who are within that sweeping range there. Mm-hmm. All right. So that is uh, 19 to hit against you, Ooh. Veth. Yes. Miss. And then Beauregard, that is a oh. 20 to hit. Miss. Misses. So wow. Beauregard what? swings out of the way. Dang, okay. Is that a 15 foot reach, 10 foot reach? It's a ten foot reach, but Ooh. they're both within yeah, yeah, yeah. space there. Big boy. Uh Veth, you take That's a big boy. fifteen boy. points of slashing damage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and then he's gonna go ahead and swing again <laughs> in an arc. That is gonna be twenty two against you. Yep. And twenty six against you. Yep. He looks like those are big hits. That sounds a lot. He's yeah. landing, but also like he could be nice. pooping. 17 <laughs> points of slashing damage. 17? Yep. I'm assuming because I am in snow that I can't uncanny dodge this. Uh, no, it's a reaction you could. Yeah. For one of them, yeah. Yeah, I'll do that for that one. Okay. So that was 17, so it becomes eight? I forgot the order of this, but that's fine. Uh, I will then... Yeah, it'll then use his chilling gaze, which it should have done beforehand. That's fine. Or you know what? You can go back. You're the DM. Yeah, I'll let you guys do it all the time. I'll go back on yeah, this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, man. So, in, in, in DM, the, the, go pre- back. the predecessor to this, <laughs> to this attack, um, wow. angrily because you're the you're the source of its sure, anger, sure. it's going to go ahead and look at you. I need you to make a Constitution saving throw, Beth. Don't worry. Uh, suddenly, totally you feel its it. piercing, angry blue eyes just pierce the inside of your psyche. Uh. Uh, 20. 20. And you shrug it off. What was it? Mm-hmm. You don't Was it fright? You shrug it off. Uh, it. All right, that finishes its turn. Uh, and then it's going to come to Beauregard, Ford, you're on deck. Okay, so I still, we still took that damage, the sweeping damage. You did. Mm. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. Well, it's right beside me, so that's convenient. Can I flank Veth? Can I move around and flank? I don't know if that's helpful, Could, if you but... could see me. <laughs> I'm gonna go over here. There's a blood splotch in the <laughs> I'm making eye I'm contact with you. Over I, here. I, snow. <laughs> you are red snow. You Why are you red snow. snow. <laughs> Miss. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna kind of uh, try and uh, leap off of like an icy snowbank and pop it in the head a couple times. Pop, pop. Pop, pop. Pop, pop, pop. 25 for that first one. 25 hits. Stunning strike. Stunning strike. That is 20 points of damage. Why? Okay. Yeah. So damage on that one? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right, 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 right. Um, 13, that was a terrible roll. All right. Okay, next one. Go for it. That's even better, uh, 28. That hits. Uh, stunning strike. We'll roll damage first, and then we'll stunning strike. Okay. I know you're excited. Oh, I got you. Uh, 13. No, sorry, 16, 16. That is... Damage. Yeah. Set, uh, 17. To save from it? To save. What's the DC? Son of a bitch, just 16. 16. Makes the save. How smart is this? Okay, all right, all right. It's, you all right. it's constitution. <clears throat> you have, if, yeah. If, if, you want to, if you want to get a gauge its intelligence, you'd have to take a little moment to inspect oh, it. No. But. Give it okay. a quick ACT test. Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> it's got a it's got a hefty hefty physicality She's to it. It's going for the state level. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, pa, uh, flurry of blows. Pop pop. Uh, pop. Go for it. Yeah, da, da, da. Okay, that first one's gonna be a twenty-seven. Uh, that hits. Sorry. Stunning strike. So damage. Okay. <laughs> Just doing it all at once. Um, 1d8 plus 6 is 11 damage. All right. That is 15. Ha ha ha! Ha ha! 
He is done. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Three Ooh. key points down. No, wait. Stunning to change your and point. my pop pop. Four stunning to strike. Er, sorry, key points. But he is done. He is stunned. Okay. And last <laughs> pop pop. Uh, 17. Nope. Sorry. 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 21. 21 hits. Roll damage. Do you want to stunning strike him again? <laughs> no. <laughs> I rolled a one. <laughs> Which sucks. So seven damage. Seven damage. You got it. So as you swish behind, begin pummeling the back of its leg, you find kind of the base of its spine where you imagine it would be, and just start hitting towards the nerve center. And it's just hitting hard, muscular meat, guarded by this thick layer of fur. And you're just you're hitting it and you're hurting it, and it's kind of like looking over, trying to swap back at you. And then you get one good hit that you assume is right at the base of the spine. As you do it. And oh! Yells and like locks up, and you see it start to like fold to one knee almost. Right in that sciatic nerve. Yeah. Ooh. That shit um, sucks. I know from experience. Yeah. Uh, the extract aspects. All right. You, since it is immune to cold damage, and that is the extent of its ailments. Crazy. Not surprising. Yeah, there's nothing. Mm, I crazy. feel like we all knew that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. now you know. It's immune to cold. Is it smart? That's right. No. Good to know. <laughs> I think its constitution is beefy, though. Yeah, I had plans. Beefy. All right. Not but think. four key points in, he is stunned. <sighs> nice. All right, as it's howling in pain, it is now Ford's go. Uh, so much. I can't, uh, can you count the squares so for me to the much. big Yeti? Am I within 30 feet of him, or just outside of it where I am under the net? I can't quite Under see. the net, you are roughly 25 to 20 feet from him. Okay, uh, I will take. Well, I'll take two because if I tried to shoot out from under this net, it would probably be a disadvantage, right? Um, probably. I'll say yes, just because it, it's kind of instilling that challenge from below. I will try and I'll take two swipes at the net to try and clear uh, the net from uh, Dag and myself. Yep, yep. Okay. Yeah, I was about to say you can. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, Yasha does give you advantage if you just want to make an athletics check as you're. Oh. Oh, because she's holding it up. She's yes. helping hold the that thing up if you want to. Yeah. So, as opposed to having to try and cut through, you just actually muscle it off of you. With so, advantage? With advantage on an athletic That'd strike. be great. Okay. Uh, 15 and uh, 18. Yeah, no worries. You get the net free, and it falls down into the snow. <laughs> Amazing. Um, with my bonus action, mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to uh, channel divinity. And I'm going to uh, activate my Fury of the Tides. Okay. What the fuck? So as you lift and shove the net off with your hand, you hold the blade there, and as you kind of hold it in front of you, looking around the space, you watch as some of the ice in the ground begins to suddenly melt in the proximity of the, the snow. And as it melts, the water just seems to almost reverse drip upward onto the blade, and the blade itself seems to have this kind of weird, liquid, shimmering water across its surface. Riptide, motherfuckers. Cool. All righty. You still have your movement, because you broke free of the Oh, net, yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I will, um, I have a pointer here. Uh, I will uh, head 30 feet in this direction, out this way. All righty. Good call. Great. You got it, that finishes Ford's go. All right, Jester, you're up. Um, can I get to the Big Yeti? You can. Okay, I'm going to step up. Behind the big yeti. The baguette. Mm -hmm. The baguette. Spaghetti. And I'm going to cast. Mom's spaghetti. Uh, inflict wounds Weak. at fifth level. Okay, go for it. Do I get advantage because he's stunned? Yes, you do. Okay. Mom's spaghetti. <laughs> um, I rolled an 18, a melee spell attack. Hold on. Snow like white confetti. So that adds um, plus 10, so 28. 28? Oh, All right, that'll definitely hit. Go ahead and roll damage. 7d10. Ooh. Ow. 7d10? Yeah. Are any of these guys holding weapons? Uh, the big one is big holding man. this like Hooks. pole arm with like a hook spear in the end of it, and the other ones appear to just have claws and like some tools and bandoliers around them. So they're just not, terrible. They're, they're physical like physical shit. claws. They're not like they're not like 
weapon claws. No, they're just they're claws. they're 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 physical claws. Okay, cool. But yeah, you're not seeing yetis claws. with like tools yeah. and attire before. Probably. Most of the ones you've encountered, <laughs> and, the, and the one time you encountered them were were a little more kind of just feral. What is it? What? Got... Forty one points of damage. Whoa. Whoa. Beast. As it's tensed up after being jabbed with a dagger, pummeled, and then having its spine cracked, you rush forward, and as you reach your hand outward and touch an element of its knee, there's this surge down your arm of black necrotic energy, similar to what you guys recently suffered by the gem. <laughs> and as it impacts around the body, you watch as the fur around where your hand touched turns dark gray, then eventually black in that space, all at the thigh. And it goes and falls down. Now it's both on both knees in the ground. It's hurt. Do I have any movement left? Uh, you would have 10 feet left. Can I back up 10 feet? Sure. Yeah. Jester's complicated. Stunned, so it can't uh, it can't do an attack opportunity on you. Alrighty. Still. That finishes your turn. Yeah. All right. With that, the it is now the Yeti's turn. The other Yeti's. Uh, this one over here goes, Crystal, oh, and ends up no, running. It's his mother. Oh, and Captain, is going to go ahead no. and attempt to grab and throw you back, Beth. Good luck. Um. <laughs> I mean, I'm snow. You can't throw snow. Oh wait, you can. <laughs> You're also not hidden anymore because you revealed your. I'm snow. <laughs> Just make, a, make a deception check. Here we go. Twenty. Ooh. Uh, thirteen. It says. No, you're not. <laughs> oh, and very clear common. Oh, oh shit. Oh, shit. Um, no. And I need you to make an acrobatics oh. check for me. Acro. Maybe nice. they're not idiots. Natural 20. Cursed. You weave out of its grasp as it tries to grab you. Um, it does put its arms out to protect the larger Yeti. Oh, no. Um, oh, no. These like cursed people. This one can here. make a net? Is going to. Can, yeah, they, they yes. can make nets. Maybe they. Sold off speak someone they killed. Languages. Oh, and they, they ambushed speak. us. You can only get so close. Okay. It's going. And you see the one behind there goes like, no, and goes running. Oh, it oh. looks over towards you, Yasha, because you're the one who's you can only get to. <laughs> and as it glares in your direction, you look over your shoulder as you go for your blade, and you watch its eyes flash blue. I need you to make a Constitution saving throw for me. Okie okay. doke. Which you're good with. Fifteen. Fifteen does succeed. You kind of shrug off whatever sort of piercing, chilled effect it was putting upon your mind, ah. um, and it's going to go ahead and try and lay into you with two claw strikes. Okay. Uh, that is going to be ooh, not too bad. Uh, that's going to be a twenty-four to hit. Yeah. And a nineteen to hit. Yar. All right. You take nine points of slashing damage, plus three points of cold, so it would be it'd be five, and then. We'll round down to be four and then three. So you take seven points. The other one is going to be six points slash damage reduced to three, and then six points of cold damage that goes straight through. That finishes that one's turn. This one's going to rush around and kind of come into, into range with both of you, and it's looking frantically between you in the direction of the big one, and then kind of as it goes. It just looks vengefully pissed in its face before it gives this horrible growl, its eyes piercing blue. I'm um, actually gonna whistle. All right, make a constitution saving there for me. Okay. With advantage because of the cute whistle? Nope. <laughs> uh, ooh, nine. Nine. Damn it. You whistle, it looks back at you, its eyes flash blue, and suddenly you feel the inner the inner aspect of your body freeze solid. <gasps> you are paralyzed for one minute. Oh, that's not. Nice. Oh, these oh, things yeah. are meaner than I thought they were. And it's yeah. going to make two attacks on you with advantage because you are now paralyzed. Oh no. Better me than you? Uh, oh, you also take. How did you do that? It breathed, it, it used the eyes. <clears throat> Icy gaze or something. It's there. Uh, did you just make that up? 17 points of cold damage to you, Caduceus, from that gaze. I don't think so. Frosty snakes. <laughs> Frosty flakes. <laughs> Took one for the team. Oh, that was so nice of you, Caduceus. Rather have the wizard up. Did you take healing this today? I did. Yay. Oh. 25 to hit for the first strike. <laughs> that hits. I know. Did you take Natural it? 20 on the second, yeah. but it doesn't matter, they're auto crit because you're Please. paralyzed. Yeah. They're crits? When you're paralyzed, melee attacks are auto crits. 
So the first strike against I don't you. Don't suppose my shield of retribution works. Never mind. Sorry. Nope, you can't use reaction because yep. you're paralyzed. So the first strike is going to be 15 points of slashing damage. How? Plus six points of cold damage. How? The second one is going to be. Ooh, that's going to be 17 points of slashing did you, damage. Did you roll to hit? Yeah, the, the natural 20 was the second attack. Okay. But they're both critical because they're Yeah, both so it doesn't matter. Um, Sorry. It's okay. And then, t- and then 10 points of cold damage. So 27 on the second hit? Yes. Yep. Ow. Um, and is frantically trying to Ow. maneuver through and take yeah. out whatever it can yeah. in the process. Mm-hmm. That finishes yeah. its turn. Caleb, you're up. Caduceus, you're on deck for your saving throw. Uh, so I just watched Caduceus uh, get laid waste to, and all the plans I had just went out of my head, and I reach out my hand and put it on my tall friend's shoulder, and I turn him into a mammoth. <gasps> okay. I have no idea what that does <gasps> in, this, in this situation. <laughs> Is he a paralyzed mammoth? Yes, well, he has lots of hit points, though. Yeah, smart. Uh, yeah, and good. I will use yeah. my movement to uh, circle around the Yeti to get into f- flanking position. <laughs> right there? Yeah. Okay. Please punch that How many hit man. points do I have? Just it. Oh, I'll tell you one and, thing. Yeah, as much, as much, or I can look up Mammoth. I After it pulls back with its like bloodied claws, growling angrily, you spin around, and it's still keeping kind of like, <sighs> looking over towards the rest of the fight across the way, and then as it looks, spins around towards you, it hears the, the grinding sound of something getting heavier. It swips around and <sighs> looks up at the Mammoth growing where the small fear bog once was, and just kind of goes <laughs> <laughs> you see it. You see it audibly go. Thresh, you get, you don't know what language it speaks, but it's a curse. It is. It is, it is loud, loudly cursing at its luck. Mother. Did you find it, Tal? No, not. One twenty-six hit points. One twenty-six. One twenty-six is good. Yeah, I found it. Okay. All right, Caduceus, mm-hmm. you are a mammoth. But you're also paralyzed. Go ahead and make another constitution saving throw for me, please. Do I use the mammoth constitution? Yes, you do. I don't have advantage, though. No. Okay. Here's a pink and green mummy. Um, oh, that's 14? 14 will do it. You are, at the end of your turn, the Much better constitution than I have. Hey, on. nice. He is a mammoth at Burning Man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is fun. That finishes your go Caduceus. Top of the round. Veth, you're up. Yasha, you're Ooh, on deck. I'm up. <clears throat> um, can I see that blade in, in, in its chest? Nice. Yes, it's a little ways up, but you could probably like scramble and grab it. If I'm you gonna want to. scramble up, grab the blade, and try to pull it down Ooh, okay. in the chest. Nasty. Go for it. He's stunned. Nasty. Nasty twin. Advantage. Yep. Oh, advantage. Yep. Yeah, because yeah. he's stunned from Beauregard. Wow. Well, I don't even know. Is this? I, oh, I just used the dagger's attack. So, yeah, lots. Twenty nine. Twenty nine definitely hits. Um, and it's. Sneak attack because yeah. he's engaged yep. with, engaged with both. Well, he's stunned. Yeah, any attack that has advantage, you yep. can sneak attack. Yep, yep, yep. Oh god, oh god. It's not looking good for the big friend here. No, it's not. No, not at all. Um, two, four, seven, six, uh, twelve, sixteen, twenty-one. Uh, plus six is twenty-seven. Plus, I'll do another one of those. Uh, 35. 35, nice. Oh, God. That's nice. That sucks. <laughs> yeah, it's looking to hurt. As you carve the blade Ooh. down and pull it free from its chest, there's this giant gaping wound now in its sternum, which is now starting to just drip dark crimson onto the snow around it. It's like. <laughs> oh, I feel that bad. That finishes for your turn. It. It's, it's going to. Uh, all no. Or what else are you doing? <laughs> well, that used some movement, I assume. <laughs> Can we uh, I'll say five feet. Going to wear us his best party hat. Um, <laughs> sure. No, I'll I'll stay. I guess. Yeah, I I'll stay. I'll bonus here. action. Um, it's going to I'll hurt. I'll uh, <laughs> could run away, but I think you can use flanking and shit if I'm on it. So I'll just stay where I. Uh, flanking doesn't matter to me. I was just kind of doing it if it mattered to anybody else. All right, well then I'll disengage and run yeah. away. No, okay. <laughs> it's true. Where are you running? Um, it makes no difference. Just straight backwards. Straight backward? <clears throat> there you go. Mm-hmm. 
Is All right, Link that finishes your go. Any of us here? Mm-hmm. Yasha, it's your turn. I mean, okay, uh, like a fighter I'm going thing, really. to let out oh, a battle cry. Okay. Uh, gotcha. For zealous presence, so right. everybody within 60 feet gains advantage on attack rolls and saving throws. Yes, yes. let's go, Bell. Yes. Till my next turn, and uh, as I'm screaming out my battle cry, I take out a uh, magician's judge. Magician's judge. And. Uh, Attack. You got it. I this big boy. Forgot attacking this initiative, so I'll do that after your turn. Oh, do you want to do it? I'll do it after your turn. Okay. Uh, so, let's see. The net blocked him from my view, weirdly. All right, so go for it. You're attacking the one right in front of you, right? Yes. Right. Okay, so that would be uh, 24. 24 hits. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna try Savage Attacker. That's better. Mm-hmm. 29 points of damage for the first hit. Damn, nice. That's the first hit. Oh, okay, well, that rolled that. Aye, the left pap. <laughs> okay, so the second hit is 23. 23 hits? Yep. Uh, the, mm. Much better. Like. Whoa! Yeah. Well, yeah. I, we had. We found some discrepancies. Uh, realized, uh, well, I realized I was doing something wrong. Um, 20 points of damage. Yeah. yeah! Hell yeah. Well done. I was Good. wondering. Yeah, me too. I was like, what, what am I doing? These yeah. two heavy cuts, you cut through twice. <laughs> the second swipe. This <laughs> is a scattering of blood across the snow and the Yeti. <laughs> Oh, All right, that finishes your turn. Yeah. Where are you? It's okay. 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 <laughs> it is now the large Yeti's turn. You're ready to camp in this. Who is stunned? He is on his knees right now. <laughs> he wants to build a house. I almost graduated. Oh, he said stop. He falls to like one arm on the ground, <laughs> just bleeding out of the wound in its chest. That finishes its turn. It's still stunned. Bo, you're up. Oh, Ford, you're on deck. I knew it when this happened. Oh. <laughs> I knew this. Was, you know, well, now I have to make the choice. What are you gonna do? He said, "Stop." What are you gonna do? You heard him. You, you heard him. Dick. Oh, you actually, before it's your turn, him. it is Dagan's turn. Yeah. Dagan. I was wondering. Sorry. Yeah. Dagan, Dagan should. Dagan. Dagan. Fucking. I have a bird named Dagon. I did this. I did this to myself. Call him Dag. I did this to myself. Dag. It's Dax, man. Dagger, Dagon. Say Dag. Dagon, Dagon, Dagon. Call him Dal. Oh, it's my own fault. Dagon. How about Dagon? He gets it all the time in school. It was a problem. Dagon. All right. Like Dagon's turn. Mm. That, uh, I was even rolling that. He's spending his turn. Actually, no, that's why, because he was trying to get out, which he has advantage on, which is easy enough to do. <laughs> why am I even rolling? I did, sorry. Uh, so he, he goes and like. Nice. <sighs> looks around, surveys the territory, and goes, Are we, are we stopping some Yetis? And he's going to go ahead and yeah. rush over here. With his, with Sheila removed towards the one that's currently harrying both Caduceus, and he goes, "That's crazy." <laughs> Reels up fast, and then he's going to go ahead and use because he can go. That's a yeah, that's he moves ten feet in a straightish line to it. He's going to go ahead and ram with the front Ooh, of the wheel, which cool. has the uh, yes. uh, the pins from the front to make an attack against that Yeti. Oh, yeah, that is. <laughs> that's not plus my nine. Sense. Yeah, that definitely hits. Mercy. Remember what happened to go. That'll be oh, yeah. I will never eleven forget. points of bludgeoning damage nice to that Yeti. As he just slams into it because he uses action surge oh. to get his other action back. Hell, action yeah. surge. Wait, what is that? He's a fighter. He's, he's a fighter, fighter ranger. He's multi-class. Uh, no. Um and so with this so he rams with the first strike and then brings Sheila and goes, Come on, girl! And does an overhead swing with his axe in the second strike. He's that so also hits. Done. So I don't know. If, like... No, he's uh, the guy up there isn't stunned. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, and with Sheila, both hands on this one. Uh, it's going to be ooh, thirteen points of slash damage. Yes. Dude, twenty-four <laughs> points of damage total. That's great. Ah, oh, Sheila. 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 All right, that's going to end his turn. Now, sorry, back to Bo. Ford, you're on deck. Yep. 
You heard him. Tears. You're right there. Uh, tears are missing Frozen little the blood. tears. No oh. tears. <laughs> you see in his back pocket a letter to his loved one. So this he is what it pocket, sounds like. He doesn't have a pocket, so it's like actually a letter coming out of his doves wife. Cry. But it's a letter regardless. It does cry. It's a quick one. I'm sorry. <laughs> what you okay. have, Lobo? I hard for am. Shut up, shut up. I'm gonna. Shut up. I'm about to. Vault kind of off of his off of his leg, out, like off of his crouched thigh, and get up to his shoulders, okay. and I'm gonna kind of put him in a headlock. Okay, you're attempting to sleeper hold to grapple him. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Or are you just holding peace? him? I'm just gonna hold on to him. Okay, yeah, because he's too big to grapple for you. Yes. But nevertheless, uh, easy. But I've got like a, you know, Mila Jovovich thighs that I'm just like I respect that. crunching yeah. his neck with. All you right, know? there you yeah. go. And so Say Beauregard uncle. is now Say up, uncle. Yeah. holding on sure. to to an to the sides of a neck that are uh, the neck itself is five times as wide as you are, but you have a grip. All right. I'm not gonna get in his ear. I'll just on the back of the windshield. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Relax. I'm not gonna get in his ear. Be like, did you ask us up? Did you ask us to sub? He's, his response is. <laughs> he it took all the strength to get that out. I'm he's paralyzed. Done. And what are you? What are you gonna do for us if we let you go? Yeah can speak only falteringly as part of the stun condition, so. What was your question? What are you going to do for us if we let you go? <laughs> okay. That is a six second round. Uh-huh. My stun is over. Yes, it is. Now is the end of my turn. Indeed. <coughs> so, Does he get turn. to answer Time me? Time will tell. Time will tell. Uncle. Uh, so, this is happening, transpiring while the rest of the round is happening. Mm. So you climbed up, grabbed him again, speaking, and it's been a little back and forth. The stun fades. Now we go to Ford's turn. I didn't hear any of that shit. I'm gonna walk up to this, uh, the one that uh, Caleb and uh, Dagger <clears throat> talking about. Yeah. There you go. And I'm gonna take two swipes with uh, the Star Razor. Uh -huh. Go for it. Uh, that's a 21 to hit. 21 hits. And the second one is a. Uh, that's. Better, that's a 28 to hit. 28 does indeed hit as well. Go ahead and roll damage for both. No, wait, 15. But... Yes, 28, that's right. Uh, one, two, two. I love how it got all quiet, because now I'm attacking the kids of whatever this thing is. <laughs> <laughs> Not kids, grandkids. That's right, uh, that is uh, 11. Yep, 11 points of slashing damage. 11 points of slashing damage. And it shoves him 10 feet away. Colliding with that, which does an additional five, five points, points of bludgeoning damage to him. So a total of 16 points of damage in that first strike. I, do I have to close the distance, use the rest of my speed to meet uh, him again? You would, yes, but yeah. you have... I think I only used about more. 15 feet or yeah, something. Yeah, so you're good there. Okay, you move great. in next to him. Uh, after he slams into the back of the rock and you just rush in blade ready. Amazing, uh, and that is uh, 16 points of slashing damage. It shoves him against the rocks again. <laughs> well, it's only one time per. Round. Oh, that's right. That's only yeah. one time per round. That's right. It's all good. Uh, so up against him right there. Now he's like pinned against the rock, taking a few slash wounds to the torso. He's looking pretty hurt and he's breathing heavy. Arms against the rock, <laughs> looking down at you, looking at the mammoth, looking at the mage. Uh, that finishes Ford's go. Jester, oh you're up. I'm going to assume that I heard what was going on with Bo since I was standing right in front. You're pretty close. Yeah, you would have picked up on that. Um, so I'm just going pretty to. Perceptive. I'm just going to hold a guiding bolt. Okay. Um, at second level. Um, in case uh, Big Mamba Jumba doesn't um, back off. Okay. If he acts aggressive, I'm going to hit him with it. Got it, okay. So you're holding that, that's your turn? Mm-hmm. All right, now the other Yetis go. Uh, this one here turns to the front, and it's just kind of like trying to figure out what to do. It's looking at you, Beauregard, and it looks like it's just, it's it's in a, like a standoff. That's the tinier one? The tiny one right there. Okay. It's kind of glaring up at you, its eyes sparkling, and it's just, it's full on, just stalemate at the moment, waiting for the next person to make a move. Okay. 
this one here that was attacking Yasha is still going in against Yasha. Uh, it's now going. Actually, you know what? This one. Actually, no, that's all it can do. It's going to go ahead and use its chilling gaze against you once more. So go ahead and make another constitution saving throw for me. Okay, come on. Uh, uh. Wait, you saved from it previously, right? Say again? You saved from the, from the thing previously? I did. Right? Yeah, I think that's uh, Then you are immune to it yet. So, immune. to that one? Yeah, so oh. it has no effect oh. on you. Never mind. Okay. So it does. it tries it again. You shake it off. Angrily, it just goes and tears into you twice with its claws. Oh, man. That's a 25 to hit? No. Yes, it is. And that is going to be <laughs> a 12 to hit. Okay. Uh, halved. So the first one is. 11, reduced to five, so five slashing damage. Oh, 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 I see, I see. So nice. That was, that was, those are both attack rolls, sorry. And then you take two points of cold damage. Okay. That's its cool. turn. The one over here that's against the wall with you, like surrounded with you, it just kind of like keeps its hands up and looks over now past the shoulders and sees the larger one and it's just kind of like looking for a sign, <laughs> looking, for, looking for something. It's just waiting. So it's holding its action. Okay. That brings us to Caleb Caduceus, you're on deck. As a mammoth. Ooh, uh, uh, I'm it, seeing. It used its whole turn to just do that. Hate it's holding its action. <laughs> okay, I, I can sense a little bit of de escalation here, so I'm going to hold a chromatic orb okay. uh, and attack anyone who attacks one of the Mighty Nine. You got it. Nice. Okay, that finishes your go. Yeah. What's up, mammoth? Uh, how smart am I? You know. Oh boy, I'm not that smart. What's the intelligence of a mammoth? Uh, three. Three. Yeah, it's not. It's not quite a fly. You're half a grog. A moth. I don't know. <laughs> half a grog. <laughs> wisdom a wisdom grog is eleven. Is. Yeah. So would I get the sense that this is de-escalating, or would I not? Um. Watching everyone kind of. That's. A, I'll, I will let you interpret that how you wish. I trust you, Allison. Ooh. No. Uh. So I'm going to just take a standard, I'm just going to take a gore attack. Go for it. Since no one's telling me to stop. Okay. Uh, uh, lockbox. <laughs> and that hits. I invented the intro. Um, that's, oh god, that's bad. Okay. Uh, that's, uh, where's all the dice I need for this? There's two. Oh my god, too many dice. Mm. What'd you roll to hit? Uh, 28. Yeah, you definitely yeah, hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just want to double check. One, two, three, four, is this right? Yep, so this is, oh no. Uh, 10. He's not saying he has too wait, many. Wait, let me, seven, too many to roll. 10, 15, 21 points of damage. 21 points of damage. Oh. That's what I got. How do you want to do this? <laughs> uh, yeah, he falls. Oh! Bloody. I was okay. a mammoth. <laughs> he is, he's, as you just, Gore him with the horns. He's like waiting, and as soon as he turns to go ahead and try and defend himself, <laughs> you gore him with the horns and lift him up off the ground. As they pull out, he falls to the ground, poof, unconscious. Are we heal? Um, the other uh, back there, he'll be coming up in a bit. But you sense the tension suddenly escalate immensely sure. in the middle of this yeah, battlefield. <laughs> yeah. All right. That brings us, uh, and then uh, Dagon, who sees this and is currently, after this whole circumstance, goes like, "That's not too bad. It might be." He looks over his shoulder at the rest and kind of goes like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay." Uh, and he spins and rolls up here. And goes, "I sense we have a uh, Alawak folk." Oh. Right. Uh, Son of a bitch. Can anybody? And kind of like looks over at you. Anybody? And points over to the one that's now lying oh, bleeding right. out in the snow. Oh, like heal. Um, yeah. That brings us to Vethsko. Oh. You can heal, right? I've got a potion. <laughs> um, I can heal. I will. I'll just pass. <laughs> Hold your hold. I'll, I'll hold a yeah a crossbow attack if, if things go okay. south. Yasha, it's your turn. You can see now as the the yeti stabbed, fallen, bleeding out. All the other yetis are like turning and looking, and even the big one that is currently kind of taking a moment of calm with bow on the back, eyes just flick up at its fallen comrade, and you can see rage building in its face. What are you doing? Okay, 
I'm going to walk over to the one that has fallen. To the one that has fallen. To the one that has fallen. <laughs> and then I'm going to take my hands and shove them into the chest of the, the, oh. the fur, stand him up, and then heal him for uh, healing hands. But those and go then every way. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just Mortal yeah. Kombat. <laughs> 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 and then I'm going to scream out, are we fucking done? All right, how much do you heal him for? One. That is 13 hit points. Ooh, oh yeah. 13 hit points. The number. As you lift him up, and it's a massive creature. It, it weighs close to a thousand pounds. Oh. But you are you are raging and you are furious and you you have the the wall to kind of use to lean it up. So as you like angrily lift and slam it up and heal it, its its limp knees lock into place. As its eyes roll back open. Dead look. <gasps> And then I'm going to keep him standing with my hand up against the Just holding him there. Okay, that finishes your turn? Yeah. All right. It is now the large Yeti who, the rage in the face, sits there still tense. It gets back up on one leg, throws its spear to the ground, and goes, Hold! This is done. And unless anyone has any other actions, the combat comes to a close. <laughs> yeah. I can do a cool thing I didn't get to do. That <laughs> As the mammoth? Mammoth can do a trample charge where I can like run up to somebody and like gore them and then stomp on it's them. It's awesome. Do it. It's really cool. No. It's Another day. Yeah. I'm good. Being a mammoth is super cool. Super cool. <laughs> so the tension's still high. The massive Yeti gets up on its other foot and kind of glances over its shoulder at you and goes, you can release me. I loosen my grasp, but I don't go anywhere yet. You're still clutching his back? Yeah. Still just hanging on the back. Okay. Hanging on <laughs> the shoulder. He goes, fucked up chimney cricket. <laughs> Stumbles towards the center of where the net was and kind of looks down towards Dagon and goes, you're correct. Looks at the other Yeti, and kind of calls them over. Do you let them approach? Sure. The bigger one goes. Often, people who come from your end are poachers. Not much for conversation. And we've lost a few, so to take the first swipe made the most sense. But I ask you, what would you do with us now? We are just going to walk on through. But, um, and I'm just going to share some food, please, no sudden movements. And I pull out the jar of boba <laughs> and a cloth. Please don't attack, please, please. I put the cloth down and I take the lid off the jar and I pour like 50 boba out of the jar onto the cloth. <laughs> Freezes instantly. Don't Ooh, eat more than one of those a day, diet. or you will get incontinent. But one a day will do you. Make a persuasion check. <laughs> uh, that is uh, 14. Oh, that's 14? Not that's not too bad. You watch as they all kind of stare at you, kind of glare a bit, and the one that's holding on barely brought back to life by you kind of limps forward towards it, looks at you, and Reaches over and takes like four in his hand. And goes, we're going to have the shits. I'm bigger. Yeah. Oh. 
nice and filling. The big one goes, you let us live. You're not our quarry. What is your quarry? Other people like us. Happen to see a purple tiefling. Looks kind of like her running around, but purple. Lavender. Mm-hmm. About a day ago, <gasps> passing yeah. through the same path, direction you were headed, we decided not to engage. They had strange magic about them. How do you mean? How could you tell that they had strange magic? Because they saw us and beckoned us stay at bay and not get involved. Um. And then showed some really, really strange magic. How many were with them? Yeah. It's five total. Five. Um, so hi, Snow here. Can you tell me what the other ones <laughs> looked like? I didn't get that good of a look. A lot of them wearing similar bundles as you, though not as fancy. But anyway, will you let us live? Well, yeah. Yeah. I said these, we're not here for you. Are these smaller ones your family? No, they're just other members of the uh, community. What oh, did nice. What did Dagon say? You said yeah. you're part of a. You are okay. You're what folk? Dagon kind of pets and goes like, "Yeah, see, there's um." It's kind of a small community of yetis around the corner called the Sanctuary, Alawak Sanctuary. Alawak? Yeah, only a, only a few folks really pay much mind to it, since it's a bunch of these folks. It's both dangerous to pass by unwarranted, and well, as you've noticed, they seem to have a keener intellect than standard beasts were used to. But, um, oh, it's I've, on the map. Yes, of course. Yeah, no, it says Alawak Sanctuary, right? Right here. The, <laughs> the, the large one goes over and looks at your shoulder and goes, "How many know about it?" Oh no, I believe this is the only copy. So just, just us. <clears throat> Are there any so other settlements of you all that we should keep an eye out for as we move forward? Kind of sits down now that he realizes kind of the tension's passed. The large one goes <laughs> and almost has this weird, unexpected teddy bear like quality as he's now in the sitting position, kind of tending to his wounds a bit. It's hard to explain, but we're not like other Yeti. No, we gathered that as soon as you started speaking common towards us. <laughs> but there are Yeti out there that aren't like us either, so I can't assure that. All of the kind of ours you may encounter are as cordial. But we like to keep to ourselves unless pressured. We hunt to survive. If you can promise not to cause any trouble or to share this map and knowledge of the sanctuary, we can we can carry along with you for the day and Keep an eye out. Watch your backs as you watch ours. We're going to be best friends that with a bunch of Yeti! Greatly appreciated. As you can tell, my blue friend is very excited. Do you need healing? I'm a healer. Please. Okay. I use a third level cure wounds. Wow. Okay. Whatever use for us. <laughs> wow, we see where we stand. I, yeah. I look at it and I go, <laughs> and I release Caduceus. <laughs> I remember everything. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm just gonna sit and do a quick ten minute. Uh, okay. And anybody who needs Yeti included, anybody who needs uh, Yeti. Yeah. The 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 normal Yeti, the the, the smaller ones. There's there's still a bit of tension, but they eventually calm, especially as healing is being passed out. And eventually, one of them kind of. Pulls out a small, looks like a notebook of some kind, and starts writing in it. Aww. Uh, some of the others start kind of bandaging a little bit and getting their supplies. Start recollecting the net, and they're not much for immediate conversation. But there, there's not any sort of 
aggression at this point. It seems the largest one is the most uh, diplomatic. 20, 26 healing points to whoever really needs them. And 18 Ooh. points to 26? the big one. Yeah, awesome. Eddie, Eddie you're going to take that. I the best roll I've ever had for healing. <laughs> the, one that's, uh, the one that's writing in the notebook. Yeah. Me too. Which one is that? Uh, that would be the one yeah. that uh, was trying to, st- <clears throat> that was on the other side of the large one, the one that rushed in and was trying to. It's kind of there's a up. little one writing in a notebook? Yeah. Yeah. Can I uh, can I scooch up to the one that's writing in the notebook? Yeah, as you do, he looks at you and pulls the notebook yeah. away. <gasps> Two of us. I don't knock. I I do call over Jester. It's okay. I take notes too. She draws pictures. It's kind of like her version. Okay. What do you do? Would you do you draw or do you write or? It's my diary. Oh. <laughs> oh. You were gonna kill him. This is it's one word. This is kind of like my diary. I'll um. I'll let you read my last entry, if you let me read yours. I don't really know you that well. <laughs> <laughs> Who? What do you have to lose? I'm an unbiased third party. Who am I going to tell? My privacy. <laughs> You know, sometimes if you open up to a stranger, it can actually make you feel Are a little you bit better. The Yeti? Yeah, a little okay. bit. Show me your diary. Yeah, how good. Let me read your diary, bro. You may make a persuasion or intimidation check. Okay, your call. Oh, yeah. What? Maybe one is better yeah. than the other in this situation. <laughs> but it's better for me. Uh, Henry. I'm Henry. They're the same. Said, please. Then your choice. Persuasion, because I'm not trying to be mean. I know, but there are ways. There are different ways to interpret this. How you want to? Oh yikes! I rolled a two. <laughs> For a total of three. <laughs> Listen to the dice. No means no. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> the, the Yeti goes, oh no. Puts it away. Oh. It's just very personal. I hope you understand. I do. Okay. I un- I deeply do. Yeah. I'm gonna get up now. Okay. <laughs> then I walk over to the larger Yeti and I say, uh, I'm sorry to to harp on this, that um, purple tiefling you mentioned, yeah. what, time, what time of day is it anyway? It's like midday? At, at this point, I'd say it's a little bit past noon. You guys, you guys left pretty early. So. You saw them the day prior, yes? Roughly, yeah. Was it in the morning, in the evening? We're trying to figure out how far behind. Yeah, uh, time, time. It was yeah. maybe late morning. Okay. So about a day. Full day. Like one full day ahead of us, okay. Right. Thank you. All right. Um, I'm just going to go up to the one I killed. Yeah. I, I really, I was, I was an elephant at the time. I feel really <laughs> bad about that. I didn't really get that we were Backing off. Uh, I'm gonna be honest. I always assumed it'd be a mammoth that took me out. I just didn't figure it would be like not a real one, which is kind would, of blowing my mind right now. Would you be willing to uh, accept a gift to help me kind of lift my conscience a little bit? Sure. I give him a, a cellabone <gasps> and show him how to use it. <laughs> oh, that's right, one of those. What does it do? He it's takes the, it, it's the and, start, and, and it starts oh, glowing, and he starts swinging glow it. sticks. And the other Yetis go, what, that's not fair! That's not fair! <laughs> they start running for us like, no, you gave it to me, I'm the one who died! <laughs> We're like, that's not fair. So it'll go for about an hour, or you can just turn it off, like an hour a day, or you can just turn it off when you want. <laughs> But and it's yours, and but you can share it. I'd recommend, you know, let people. It's in painted. He reaches out and like palms the top of your head and kind of like messes with your hair and goes, Thank you. Thank you for not murdering me when I was tiny. It's okay. Well, thank you for this. Yeah, <laughs> hey, there we are. Uh-huh. And he goes, wow, okay, Yeah, it's, it's his yeah. one hand goes around both of your arms. I feel good about that. We should keep going, though, if, especially if they have a lead on us. Yes. Yes. Right. The big one stands up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just find some snow oh, and just sort of clean this blade so it's nice and shiny again. Okay. <laughs> Power move. <laughs> You're gonna a full golem on us. As a, yeah. I'll, I'll send you the details of the curse cool. in a little bit. <laughs> the curse. Can you guys make us like travel even faster through the snow? Yeah. Yeah. Like a shortcut? Yeah, right. uh, there's not much in the way of shortcuts here, but we have very keen eyes at what might be coming upon the horizon before they get to your level. 
And um, we know a few hiding spots and things get a little hairy. Thank you. A little hairy? I see what you did there. <laughs> Good one, Snow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, come on, gather your things. We're going to go. Okay. Yay! And Dagon looks over and goes, This is real weird. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, usually we just kind of pass and put a hand up and don't talk. I haven't had a lot of interaction with the Eddie directly. This is, um, your weird folk. Well, maybe Thank this you. will be maybe the uh, the start of a bright future between the two of you. Probably not. No, nope, nope, probably nope, not. Nope, not. Not probably it. Nope. That's too weird for me. Yeah, I agree. Just continues on. You guys progress on for the rest of the day, um, and with the Eddie's help, we will say for the next day of travel, kind of going through a day and night cycle, they stay camped outside of the tower, or of your doorway. Uh, I was going to invite them to dinner, actually. <gasps> can, you, can you? I don't think there is a limit of number of people. Oh no, because I remember Scanlan fed like almost an entire army. Yeah, yeah but it's going to get size. in. Yeah. Right. Well, I was going to rearrange the stained glass of the components a little differently to make the door just a little bit wider. You I have to. I, I was I was checking to see if there was any like size difference, yeah, or, or requirements, but no, it's any creature you designate. So so the the entryway can shift and adjust. Yeah. So yeah. The stained glass uh, that I I took Yeti. from the temple, I will just widen out the perimeter of the uh, array, and the the door is a little bit bigger, big enough for the big man. I am going to invite you into our home. And there are certain parts of uh, our home that are off limits, but we have lots of food and beds for you. Would you like to come in? They all look at each other. Certainly. Oh, wait, wait. Don't eat the cats. Are you allergic to cats, too? No, you know what a cat Do you have cats? I don't think I've. Any idea what a cat is? We'll find out. Okay, well, just but. follow our lead, and you know, don't break anything. And yeah. all right, it's like if you see something small and furry, they're here to help, not for feeding. Got it? Gotcha. All right. Wow. This is very weird. Yeah. Uh, so I'm a yeti. We're, we're fucking. <laughs> <laughs> we are out there. Carefully <laughs> lead yeah. them into the tower, and uh, just think up. And Caleb starts to float. They step in, and at first it's like, oh, a lot. It's it's a big tower, but with all of them in, it's not as big. It's pretty. Yeah. They're still like, kind of squished in a little bit. And when they think up, it takes a minute for them to kind of gather what you really mean. And then when it does, one of them starts lifting. Goes like, oh, 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 and just starts doing like the uncontrolled <laughs> space spin, and is just <laughs> losing himself. Like, it's good, oh, it's God. Good. They grab their friend and try and pull him back down like a balloon, and all of a sudden they start going. Oh, oh, it's just this mess of uncontrolled Yeti floating. Does everybody, everybody come yeah. up till just, they feel at home? Just full on like, like early fizzy lifting anxiety. Yeah. And then eventually they start riding themselves and they're going, oh, this is so cool. <laughs> they start pushing off walls. Weapon of choice. <laughs> um, there's scratch marks in the walls they're doing it, but you know, it'll be fine That's the next That's fine, day. it will just recreate. Um, oh. But I'm not taking them past the second floor, the great hall. Um, so there are more floors above, but they're not really built out to your specifications. So let's just take a rest here, and once the rest of the nine are in, I go to the, the iris that leads to the second floor and say, um, uh, two, and the iris goes Bless. And I do the same up, uh, well, no, I leave that open for now. And I start going to different double doors and opening them. And there are very large tables on rollers. And I just start pulling them out into the room <laughs> until there are <laughs> tables bigger than, than uh, us and tables our size. And then I go and I pull a, a, a rope. And a cat comes uh, running down one of uh, the little uh, aqueduct tracks. And I say, Mitzi, we have guests, big guests, so I need you to make a very robust meal. Uh, we probably need, a, yesterday was vegetarian, we are going to need a lot of meat. So I would like ribs, big ribs, like mammoth sized ribs, okay? <coughs> Barbecue sauce, all of that. Um, <laughs> but we'll also have the mac and cheese from yesterday, as well as the waffles and the pancakes. That was good. Uh, I want ale. Yeah. Double amounts and some mm -hmm. ale, yeah. Mm. Good call. Mm. 
<laughs> we broke him. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I want in life. The necrotic stone, we can't leave it alone. The yetis, we invite him to fucking dinner. <laughs> Prime D&D D &D uh, Ten right episodes here. to get to the first uh -huh. excavation yeah. site. Yep. <laughs> Is this the is this that, is that the episode so, my dinner with Yeti? A fantastical Yeti feast transpires Yay! in the tower. So Strange funny. elements of merriment um, for just these creatures kind of adjusting to the odd magical space that they've been brought into. The meal seems to fill their bellies in a very comfortable way. Um, yes. What's can I ask what the, the big yeti? Yeah. I'll ask all of them <laughs> what their names are. The big one goes, I'm Gustav. 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 Uh, and the By others. the time dinner is done, too, there are amber spectral cats hanging off of all of them doing kitty biscuits on their arms, their shoulders, just nestled in. Kitty. They just kind of freeze when it happens. They're just like, where do you normally sleep? Like, what's an average night for you? Well, we, we have a bunch of large tents and stretched living spaces made of stone and hides. Yeah? Yeah. We, uh, they all look over to Gustav, who was like, if you ever find yourselves around or near the sanctuary when we're done walking with you, to you say you're a friend of Gustav's. Appreciate and say it with weapons away. Sure, sure. Your hospitality is, well, majestic, and I only hope that we can maybe offer the same at some point. Yeah. Excited <laughs> to experience your way of life. It's a little more rough and tumble, but uh, Gets by. Honestly, we're kind of we, we're like we're new money, you know. We're kind of <laughs> new to this lifestyle. Um, Look at that fucking mini. You're standing on its head. This conversation is happening. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that fucking face. That <laughs> <laughs> took a necrotic dagger into his heart <laughs> three hours ago. <laughs> yep. <laughs> You know, I love this game. Weirdest things this happen. This is humanity. This is what it's. This is life, man. <laughs> While they're talking, and the, and the cats are um, pulling the tables back to their place, Caleb goes over to another set of double doors, walks in, and using telekinesis, pulls like a cable or a rope out, and walks all the way across the hallway, and opens another double doors and and connects it in there, and then he opens another set of double doors, and giant white silk uh, tops are taken out, and. And uh, he uses telekinesis to pull those tops up over the rope and make like white, beautiful white tents uh, on this floor. And uh, cats uh, drag out sort of like um, sleeping bedrolls because I don't want it to be too different than what they're used to, to be pulled under the tent for them to sleep in. So no, they have a bedroom. That's awesome. That's it's arranged kind of in the open space. They all quickly pick out their spaces and lay claim to it. <clears throat> as soon as you finish, uh, Gustav goes. I thank you for, well, on all of our behalfs, for both listening to reason in a moment of tension and for being kinder than well, most folks who wander through here are, so thank you. It's a rough world, but when you can find moments of commonality. Indeed. He wipes a large chunk of meat from the side of his mouth that's kind of been there for 20 minutes, but you haven't been able to point out this goes like, on the ground. It weighs about half of your body weight, Caleb, and you kind of step back as it impacts. Oh, sorry. Right, all right. Anyway, let's pick up our journey tomorrow, see yeah. how far we get before we have to diverge. If you need it, Caleb can read you a bedtime story. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the one kind of, and it's really the kind of the smallest of the Yeti, the one that had the notebook goes, really? <laughs> uh, yeah, I have a copy of Der Zabeleling. <laughs> it is all in Zemnian, um, and it, but it is very old Zemnian, it's hard to translate. So, 
and he just starts reading it in in its Zemnian. Within five minutes, they're asleep, <laughs> soundly and comfortably, and the inner halls of Caleb's arcane tower now reverberate with a chorus of discordant snores that just vibrate the air. The actual glass of the windows sometimes seems to resonate with it at times. It's a very unique sound. It's weirdly beautiful and it's primal music, but in your chambers, thankfully, the noise is blocked. But you all have a restful evening in the tower. Unless there's anything no, not else. Not by Kitty Purse, anyway. Let's there you be go. Honest. Unless there's anything else you wish to accomplish before the night is over, you all rest well in the tower. In the morning, you set out for your. This would be. Third. This would be your fourth day of journey, which you do not have to roll on the table because you are being escorted by the Yeti. Oh, tight! So it is, it is an auto, clear, non problematic day. And you guys make your way around the bend of the mountain range on the northern side. As you get to the, towards the end of the day, you guys have to continue heading kind of in a curved southwestern direction while the Yeti return towards their sanctuary to the northwest. And so there is a moment where you part, and you see as they gather their things, the Yeti look over, and Gustav goes, "Thank you again, mighty." Nine, we know. Yeah. Right. Thank you and uh, stay safe. Um. <laughs> kind of steps forward and you kind of hug his shin, pats your back. Oh. <laughs> All right. Come on. Hopefully, we'll get back in time for dinner. And they all begin to trek their way, and as you kind of make your way southward, um, the 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 cold gray sky getting slightly more dense with the coming light snow. You watch as the Yeti step off, slowly vanishing over the horizon in the direction of the sanctuary. They might be too far away, but Caleb remembers and says, "Remember, only one boba a day." <laughs> Yeah, they are. They didn't hear that. <laughs> Not from that distance. <laughs> oh, well. They'll all die. But another night journeyed. Let's roll one more time for your final day. Boy. It's Tally, 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 Tally. Tally. Yeah, I've been doing great. That one. Number 18. Mm -hmm. Number 18. Eight good. 18. Seems all right. Mm -hmm. Who knows? The weather is clear. And despite the wind and the snowfall, you are allowed safe passage through. Yes. Yeah. Nice. And as you press on towards this final day of the journey, begin to approach the location marked on your map as A5. The terrain begins to shift from the hilly white horizon to a more snow-covered rocky region that marks the approach of the nearby mountain range and the broken ground that surrounds this section. Odd broken monoliths of stone jut from the ice like something angry punched from beneath the ground. At this point, a voice creeps into your mind, Jester. It's odd, and at first you don't recognize it because it sounds like two voices at once. One of them has this sort of sound, and you recognize it as Kreese. But then over that is another familiar voice, speaking in unison, saying, Ah, I'm so glad you decided to come. We were somewhat worried I'd scared you off. It would seem curiosity always wins. And that's all you hear. You can respond if you'd like. Are you pooping? <laughs> No, it's not. <laughs> I would, it was the oh drama behind God. it that made it. <laughs> sold it. You sold it. I would what be so here problem? for it. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. That is what I say. Do it. Okay. Own it. There is no further response. Follow. Molly just talked to me. What? What do you mean? Molly just talked to me. And said, "Um, they're waiting for us." Did they say where? I think they're here. Okay. But 
it wasn't just him, it, it was Cree too, I think. And three more? I just heard two voices. Well, wow. And Cree talked to you as well? Yeah, at the same time, what does that mean? They've got special powers, maybe? Are they all one person? <gasps> Hive mind? Interesting. Interesting. Or they're just operating on a much weirder and larger level than we've even considered. Do we have an orb near us right now? How do they know we're here? <clears throat> I'll cast uh, see invisibility again with the sword summoned. Okay. You glance, and a, roughly about a foot above Jester's head, you see a slightly faint, shimmering beacon of arcane. Oh, yes. They seem to be uh, locked on you again. Dispel. Okay. Go ahead and roll a d20 and add your wisdom modifier. Two. I've got a good wisdom, bitch. <laughs> I've got a plus five to my wisdom. Whoa. Thank you very much. My Clark. My Clark. Clark. Um, Thirteen. <laughs> Thirteen. <laughs> I rolled. Super bad. Sorry. Uh, unfortunately, it does not vanish. Mm. Say some false information. Oh, I guess I wouldn't know that it's not vanished. Is it gone? Yes. <laughs> oh, good. You got it. Oh my gosh, I'm so good at this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, they know we're here. Assholes. Where are we? I mean, it's nighttime, daytime? Uh, it's the this final day's travel before you reach here. You get here late afternoon, you have about an hour and a half until dusk. And, and you're still not entirely, you, you just see like, like for, for the somewhat hilly, snowy landscape you've been traveling with you know variations in, in uh, height, it's been mostly fairly easy to traverse, just skirting around the heavy mountain range. And as you went around to this side, this pocket, this says, portion of the valley where this is marked on the map, uh, the ground is much more broken and there are pieces of jagged stone that seem to punch through from the ground beneath. There are heavy valleys at some points, sometimes wide, sometimes very small, um, but it is a very broken landscape comparison to where you've been. How do we find like a way in or down or through? Dagon, have you been here? Uh, I've... I've helped folks find their way around here. It's just finding the space always takes a little bit. Hold on, follow me. And he begins to carry you guys through the broken spaces here. You can see it's areas are almost like pits where parts of the ground almost had small localized sinkholes, and uh, where the snow is built up, there's a, a sense of like. You're not sure if that's going to be actually solid ground or just a pit that's filled in with snow temporarily, and you precariously follow in Dagon's tracks as he's. Just a moment, just so we don't do the work for them again. Is that sphere gone yet? Uh, yeah, it does not last the entire length of your NC invisibility. Just making sure we're not showing them the way in. Yeah, like we did with Oban. They could be watching okay. us right now, not through a scry. Or like, it's just from a from a rock somewhere. Anyone see anything? Want to sweep the horizons? Do a perception check. Any ledges or embankments or anything? <clears throat> do a do, scan. But... I'll try one. Sixteen. What'd you roll? Seven. I'll give it a go. I rolled a natural one, which brings it to eleven, but. Yeah, still a natural one. The 16. 16, okay. Glancing around the vicinity, nothing catches your eye. Um, you just see a bunch of ice gathered in areas where the rock seems to come off, an, come off at an odd angle. You can see the lengthy icicles and bits of jagged ice that is gathered around some of the embankments and bases. Um, and it's an oddly alien landscape within an alien landscape. Is it at all like the barbed fields type of thing? Nowhere near that tall, and it's okay. more just like a very varied and broken ground. The barbed fields was these massive spires, these weird angled, sometimes hooked spires that defied logic. 
Um, but as Dagon leads you through, it takes about an hour or so, and the light, the sky begins to get somewhat darker before eventually he goes, all right, I've, this is all looking mighty familiar. Uh, it's got to be there. And he points over, and you can see a jagged ice shelf that arches over the mouth of a lightless cavern that descends into darkness below. It would be easy to look past this and not even notice it, but once Dagon points it out, it's hard to not see it amongst all the uh, somewhat rough and jagged terrain, there is definitively a cave mouth there. And once, you, once you're noticing it, the presence, for some reason, shakes you a bit. This is, this is the excavation site that you've been seeking. Are there footprints leading into it? Does it uh, look like people have already? He wants to make an investigation check to look. Can. Uh, I mean, it's investigation, I don't know why I bother. Uh, that's a three minus one, so that's a two. Okay. I'm going yeah, to. Any, no. any sign of like um, camping, campfires, anything? I'd, I'd say an investigation or survival, either way, if you want to check. What would, be, what would have been your survival roll on that? Oh, way higher. Oh, that would have been eight with. Right, with still not enough, yeah. yeah. I rolled real bad. 28. 28, mm -hmm. okay. What you do find. There are numerous frozen corpses dragged from the excavation site that have been kind of thrown down into certain areas of the surrounding ravine that are just currently covered in frost and ice. Um, kind of glancing down at the spaces, there's enough snow on them where it looks like they've been there for a while. Not yesterday. Not yesterday. You do find fresher footprints leading towards the entryway. I mean, there are there are numerous signs of footprints. Um, some appear to be much older, and you only catch elements of them that are left under kind of overhangs as you make your way around where a majority of the harsher weather didn't quite cover their presence. But you do see fresher sets of footprints, um, a number of them that have made their way to that opening probably in the past 24 hours or so. These bodies, do they look like uh, the rough and tumble dangerous type or workers? A little bit of both. Yeah. Some, it's hard to tell. You, you gather and you, I'd say you find with that roll uh, five different bodies just kind of looking around, some that are just mostly buried and you kind of wipe off the area and find them. You see one that's most of a person. They all appear to have been <laughs> cut, like they've all been gashed to death. Um, some sort of, of battle or assault and their life. Um, you see uh, one of them appears to be a uh, goblin. Um, you see two that are standard humans. Um, one of them looks relatively kind of what you'd expect from somebody who works at a Balan post. Um, you see one looks a little more kind of almost Merchant in the way their clothing is presented, though they're wearing a heavy cloak over it, and but their whole front of their torso is just stained red, and they are frozen in like a layer of thick ice and snow. Any items on these people? Magical items, weapons, anything like that? You can check. Make an I'll investigation. Cast detect magic. Hearing Ford say that. Okay. Um, Seventeen. Seventeen. Good call. Uh, a lot of these bodies, you'd have. Or I'd say some of them you'd have to to warm up a bit to try and get to the ice that has gathered upon them over time. They've been here for quite a while. Um, nothing magical catches your attention. And looking at most of the bodies, aside from what they're wearing and some simple, basic like daggers, short swords. One of them has like a short bow over their back. Um, all their money, all their belongings have been taken. Two of them aren't even don't even have boots. Wow. Looks like whoever killed them robbed whatever seemed to be of worth. The fuck takes some boots. And this opening down into below, is it big? Is it like a little mine shaft? What are we talking about? Uh, it's about maybe 12 feet across from side to side and no taller than eight feet. I'll check it for traps. Three people. Well. Go for it. And do I see any markings, any signs, any language carvings on the wall that look like it's signifying anything? Or is it no. Just nature at this point. It's just nature. Yeah. Okay. 27. 27? Uh, no traps. Great. 
But as you get, as you get closer and falling behind Nott, as Nott signifies that it's not trapped, you do notice that at the edges of the stone of the entrance, where some of the ice itself kind of comes in and, and, and seems to be facing in the direction of the opening, you can see elements of the stone are carved, or at least have markings, like they've been chiseled and broken. And the ice itself at this place, um, while there are fresher icicles that fall from it, you see the signs that this has been worked. This has been, uh, you gather, because what you do as an investigator, um, that this cavern has been uncovered. Not natural, necessarily, but. Right, I mean, it, it was, the cave itself was, was natural in its formation, but it was uncovered by digging and removal of ice forcefully, and that's, that's the most you get out of that one. Well, this is the pits. Our adversaries absolutely know we're coming. They are absolutely waiting for us. They ha- seem to have the ability to look at us at any time they want. We have no element of surprise. This is the pits. Yeah. Yeah. The best I can think of is to send my cat in and see how long it takes for them to kill him. We don't know how far down they are. Correct. We don't know if they're in there at all. They're, they've got to be. Pretty sure they are. Well, remember it was two Alpha and Alpha, which is far further north than here. They may have been here yesterday and moved on already. Do I see any footprints that look like they are leading away from here, further north? Um, like they've been here and then they're gone? Looking like anyway. None of the fresher ones. Huh? None of the fresher ones. None of the fresher ones look like they've moved Meaning away. Meaning there's lots of old, stale ones going in every direction. Yes. The freshest ones are inward. Correct. Okay. I don't know. Feels like they're still here. Mm-hmm. So this is an ambush. This is an ambush. What are we doing? Five on seven? Could be yeah, worse. There are five. five that killed a really strong. Snuck into her room. We're eight now. Unnoticed. We've got Dagon with us. Five on eight. Uh, I don't mean <coughs> to. Gesundheit. Gesund. Sorry, it snuck up on me. I just want to be clear. I'm, I'm a guide. Um, I get you to the location. So eight on seven. I'm not going down there. Oh, makes sense. Such a cool yeah. fighter. <laughs> but we'll just be careful. We'll send in the cat. <laughs> I'll we'll go invisible and scout ahead. Yeah. We'll check our six. That's a thing that people do. Actually, your invisible won't work. Why? Well, yeah. Molly noticed the scrying orb, which I can do only when I see invisibility. <clears throat> They'll see you. Yeah. I can still sneak. You can. Should I try to send a message to Molly? How about you say, where are you? Or clap three times. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to try to send a message. Okay. Why are you doing this? What do you even want from us? We just miss you. I thought you were our friend. Anyway, we're here. The Molly voice returns rather rapidly from your statement and says, I don't mean you any harm. I'm just pursuing my interests. And if you have similar interests, well, I'm inviting you to come along. You don't have to. Does it sound like he's lying? <laughs> <laughs> Make an insight check. <laughs> Shifty. Oh, good. <laughs> 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 I rolled a two, so 
Seven. <clears throat> Hard to gauge through a, a message spell necessarily, <laughs> and you're still a little shook by the interaction. Now, hearing that voice again after so long, it still kind of rattles you. I haven't even asked him what his name is. What if we join him? What if we take him up on his offer and join him? I don't think deceit's going to work on this one, but. I'm I, not being deceitful at all. You don't even know what you're joining, though. No, I don't. I didn't know what I was joining, though, when I got thrust into the Cobalt Soul either, though. Made it work. What if they're doing evil shit? They are. Well, then I don't want to join them. Well, be, be, you you join to see what happens, and then at least we're there when shit goes awry. Right? This is the pits. Let's be cautious. Either we walk in and we get ambushed. We won't get ambushed. We will get ambushed. We won't. Why, why wouldn't we get ambushed? Because we're smarter. I don't we're think expecting that's it. true. An ambush means that they take you by surprise. They know so much more. They, we don't even know realistically why we're here. We're chasing a ghost. They've got the entire upper hand right now. You're not really selling your point. How am I not? They've got Saying, Let's all of, in. they're holding all of the cards. Why would we fight that? You can't go up against the house when it's like that. So. Bo has a small point. We don't even know what it is they want, what they're trying to do or accomplish. It seems like something that we should stop. It feels evil, but Vesta Ragna is no saint. Whatever that they're doing they're that's sense. evil, whatever ritual that they're trying to accomplish, they're not going to accomplish it tonight. They're trying to, they can't. They're going somewhere. They're trying to gather something. They've got this book back from Vesta Ragna, from the source. Super mad at myself that I didn't think like that he was speaking very literally, that he was taking it from her directly. So he has that piece of the puzzle. Beyond that, we don't know, other than we know that he's here gathering shit for some reason. I just took and we're, the air. Are you getting all this? I'm sure he is. Are we still being watched? Yeah, I mean, I have, it's up last for an hour, so I can look. Yeah, no sign of anything around you. No, we're good. I say, uh, you're not wrong, they're gonna tell us what's going on. I don't think that this necessarily this doesn't feel like an ambush because they wouldn't be setting us up for this. It let us walk in, I guess. He either thinks he's here because we're competing against him, or he knows we have no clue what's going on and we're simply chasing him and he is leading us into a trap. It's also entirely possible he doesn't know why we're chasing him. He knows enough. We're going in, right? We are. We always decide on I, the I also may have a locate creature spell, so. We can uh, lock in on Cree. Even five against seven. He snuck into a member of the Cerberus Assembly's room and murdered her. No problem. Someone that we repeatedly said time and time again, even after she died, that she's a member of the Cerberus Assembly, no one should be worried about her, she can protect herself. We said that after she died. So, whatever we're working with, we don't know what it is. We are following them in blindly. We've done that before, we did it with Oban, and it worked okay in our favor, but we were chasing Yasha. <clears throat> we don't know what we're chasing right now. There is, these are great points. We have nothing that we can do to solve them, though. We, but join no, them. How? Follow where they're going. Just go along for the ride. How is that different from what we're about to do? We're going down there anyway. We're not gonna, f it's the difference between saying, hey, what's up, and fighting them right now. That's a fair point. I, we we either go down, them. We so that's the conversation then. We try and talk before anything. I don't think there's any question that we're going in. No, I'm not, I'm not debating that. I'm debating what do we do when we find them. I have no problem listening. 
do our best to defend ourselves and have a conversation. We just had dinner with fucking yetis, for Christ's sake. I'm, I'm fine listening. All right. He's gonna watch us as we go down. I sure. think the more amicable we seem, it means we're not resurrecting someone tomorrow. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. We have no choice we're but to him. go in. We have no choice but to go in. He murdered a high-powered government official. It looks like we did. Of course, we're going in. Mm-hmm. We have no plan. I am not joining something. I don't know what it is. It doesn't change what we're going to do. We are going to go in at a disadvantage. There's a difference and find between out joining. This and is semantics, Beauregard. We're going in. I'm, I'm not, not, not debating that we're not going in. The eyes of nine in advance. I'm not suggesting that we join the Eyes of Nine and slit our wrists and do some sort of ritualistic magic. That's not what I am suggesting. And I know we're going in. I'm only presenting a plan for when we encounter them. And, and the plan is that we'll talk first. Fine, let's go. Sorry. You can get in the car with someone and see where they're headed without. <clears throat> let's take it one step at a time. I like your optimism. If, if the road looks like it's opening up in that direction. I'm not up, don't mistake any of this for optimism like I have hope. I'll start walking towards the entrance. <laughs> okay. I'm into that. Same I just don't want forward. anything to be misconstrued that I am joining in some sort of evil force, but <clears throat> fighting it head on doesn't seem like the I'm point. I'm already walking after Ford. <laughs> All right, cool. You get it, you get it. We're on the same page. Okay. Ford and Caleb enter the cavern. I'm going to turn and kill you the second you say it. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else follow after them? Oh, yeah. Are we sending Frumpkin ahead? Are we doing anything? Yeah, I think that's actually fair. Frumpkin's a good idea. Well, I feel like me and Ash are standing outside of the cave for a minute. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, they could have killed us too. Sure. You know, they, they didn't come after us. Yeah. Not that that means much, but. We don't really have a choice. Let's go. This is stupid. I place my hand on this Ford's so shoulder. Stupid. Well, one by one, you all step into the beginning entrance of the cavern. As the shadow begins to take you, and you prepare the next length of your journey into the subterranean unknown, on the heels of Molly Mock, or whatever he calls himself now, and old friends he carries with him, we'll pick up there next week. Think about this. It's always there. Ding, 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 ding. Yep. <laughs> Got a little time to think on this, <laughs> and we'll pick up there as as you delve into your first excavation, outer excavation of Aeor. I'm excited, you guys. Uh, just five more hours, Dad. <laughs> you, got my you, you did it! Yeah. Oh my God. It went everywhere. Wait, Wait you, went, you, you did it? You uh, broke it? You snapped it? Did. Oh, you broke no. His little bow was all hand. over the floor. <laughs> oh my God! Oh my God, yes! Oh my God! I'm covered in like, oh, yeah, little water <laughs> right in my crotch. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud of you, Travis. Oh, a grenade went off right in my. Well, that's a that's a good metaphor for germ spread. There you go. <laughs> well, uh, well, at least we on that note. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for coming along with us. Don't forget, we love you guys very much. And is it Thursday? Woo-hoo! Good night. Good night.